Won't last unless we help out. It may be intimidating, but it's not impossible. And it all begins with a little respect. Plant more kindness into every day. Connect meaningfully to more things that matter. Uncover more of what the country has to offer by putting away what we no longer need. Strengthen our ties to the past and pave the way to an even more fun future. It all begins with a single step. It all begins with us. Together, we can make these views last. Save our spots so it's more fun Hello everyone, good morning, and mabuhay. Thank you very much for joining us here today as we all together share a platform in widening our perspective, knowledge, and learnings regarding a very relevant topic today. We welcome you all to the Traveler Search, resurfing for new experience with sustainable destinations. Our moderator for this session is the Dean of the Lyceum of the Philippines University, College of International Tourism and Hospitality Management. Let's all welcome Dr. Lilibeth C. Aragon. Thank you very much, Renzo. Mabuhay and blessed morning to everyone from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. We would like to extend our greetings to all our participants for this morning. Kamusta po kayong lahat? If you're feeling great today, may I ask you to give each other a heart emoticon. Thank you. I'm seeing uh, hearts right now. Keep them coming. Thank you very much. We hope that everyone is doing well, you're safe and healthy, and at the same time, enjoying a very strong internet connection to sustain your presence because we have a very interesting theme for today and, of course, powerful lineup of speakers. With that, uh, we would like to remind everyone that this webinar is provided by the association to all our participants and other relevant stakeholders and partners. The purpose of this webinar event is to discuss the web form. Is to discuss in the web form and the email sent by the secretariat during the registration process. All trademarks and images referred and used in this web event are the property of respective owners and used for educational purposes and discussions only. In addition, the views and opinions expressed in this webinar are solely from the speakers, moderator, participants, and resource persons for this morning. They do not necessarily reflect or represent the association's policy or views unless stated in writing as an approved position. Data gathered during the registration process will be handled in strictest confidence and will solely be used for the purpose of this event. Please be informed that this webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes and may be re-uploaded in the official website or pages of the Tourism Industry Board Foundation, Incorporated, BOT Trains, and other social media accounts of the association. Should you have any privacy concerns, please do not hesitate to contact the organizer. So once again, we thank you for coming to this webinar in your most comfortable and decent attire. We acknowledge our early birds who checked in at least 15 minutes before the start of the session. This enabled them to check their videos, their audio, and other features of the Zoom platform. If we still have people waiting to be admitted in the room, we beg your indulgence to be more patient with us. And of course, to optimize our webinar experience for this morning, we would like to give this uh, technical briefing. We encourage everyone to put their cell phone and other devices in silent mode to reduce interruption and concentration. Please be reminded that microphones will be turned off for all the participants. We would like to engage all of you by utilizing the icons that you have on your screens, the chat box for your self introductions, your statements and concerns while the webinar is ongoing. You also have viewing options on your screens. 
So should you prefer to see the proceedings in full view or side by side with a speaker or gallery view that will enable you to see other participants? So you may want to go to the view or tab located in the upper right corner and choose speaker's view so you can have a good view of the spotlighted speakers. And um, to view the presentations well, you can move the divider to the right or to the left, depending on how big you want the slide to be. We encourage everyone to follow the program by cooperating and observing the house rules. Only those who stayed on for at least 80% of the session and complete the evaluation will be given an e-certificate. An e-certificate will be issued upon filling out of the evaluation survey form or the ESF. The link in the QR code will be provided before the end of this session. So make sure you finish the event. No video will be turned on for all the participants except for the speakers and video will only be turned on only at the end of the only towards the end or during the photo opportunity so once again thank you for your attendance your patience and your cooperation we are ecstatic of course to bring you this webinar jointly organized by the Department of Tourism, the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, TOLTOA, or the Philippine Tour Operators Association, together with Rex Education, focused on the traveler search, resurfing for new experiences with sustainable destinations. This is a significant occasion since this is the 11th webinar since we started a couple of years ago. And of course, we have our regulars. And this is our first for this year, 2022. With our theme, we would be getting various perspectives from our highly knowledgeable and respected resource persons from the government, from sales and marketing. We also have tour operators, of course, from the academia, and of course, from the perspective of a tourist. So join us as we can uh, get better prepared for the four ends. Now, next, do normal. And um, to those who are not able to register and join us in the Zoom platform, we'd like to remind everyone that this virtual event is now streamed live via the Facebook page of DOT Trains, Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated. And so once again, welcome to Travelers Search Resurfing for new experiences with sustainable destinations. For text giving and guidance for today's webinar, let us begin our program with our opening prayer.
At this point, of course, we would like to get to know our participants for today. We'd like to acknowledge uh, our participants who were able to post their affiliations. And um, as mentioned, it spans uh, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. We have very good turnout of participants for this morning. And of course, in one of the questions that was posted earlier, where do you want to go? And uh, they were able to post Boracay, Shargao. Uh, Batanes and a lot of different places and so things are getting better and uh, we would like to laud our 932 participants who registered with us and as of Monday uh, if you can recall we only had 452 participants and um, just yesterday 5 30 p.m it escalated to 932 participants and so we have close to 400 in the flu uh, the zoom platform and the rest is in facebook and so we'll be accepting more participants later and we promise a very good program for all of the participants for this morning it's not just going to be enjoyable but it's going to be um there's going to be a lot of learning and uh, new knowledge and information coming from our guest yes, speaker so let's see the 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 data from our participants so in terms of gender distribution we have 79% of our attendees who are female and the male at 21%. And uh, of course, we would like to show our age group. So it's very diverse. So on top, we have uh, participants from the age range between 18 to 24 years old, followed by those between 35 to 45, 44 years old, and between 25 to 34 years old. And of course, we have 42 to uh, 45 to, I think it's 59 years old, 12%. Moving on to the regional distribution, on top of our attendees is coming from Region 7. So Region 7 is from Central Visayas, and uh, we have the next from Region 4A, from the um, Calabarzon region, and the third is from the National Capital Region. But of course, we'd like to uh, acknowledge our participants coming from the different uh, regions joining us this morning. In terms of the industry sector, Majority of our participant comes from the academe training institution and the tourism trainers, of course, and uh, followed by the travel and tour services, the tour operators and travel agencies. And uh, next we have um, non-tourism sectors. I'd like to acknowledge also our participants coming from the local government units, from the different gateways, other tourism related establishments, the tour guides uh, from different regions, from the events in MICE or from the transportation sector, from the food and beverage sector, restaurant, from the different sectors also outside of the tourism industry. So maraming maraming salamat po for continuously patronizing the uh, programs, the webinars of the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, of course, in partnership with the different government agencies. And for today, we have our uh, partner, of course, the Philippine Tour Operators Association or FILTOA. Of course, in support, we have uh, the Department of Tourism. As such, I would like to acknowledge also the presence of our officials and our um, friends from the Department of Tourism from the Tourism Industry Board Foundation. Of course, we have the different uh, officers also of the Philippine Tour Operators Association, the administrators and the students coming from the different um, institutions of uh, higher educational institutions in senior high school, joining us for today, um, TESDA, and of course, from the Department of Education. So, mabuhay at mag and to formally welcome all of us and give the opening remarks, I would like to um, direct you and give the floor to the 
uh, Assistant Secretary of the Human Capital Development and Industry Manpower Development of the Department of Tourism, ASEC Maria Rica C. Bueno. As we prepare the video of uh, ASEC RICA, let's get to know the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated. At this point, I would like to call the very energetic, the vibrant chairperson of the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated and the uh, associate board member of the Hotel and Restaurant Association of the Philippines. Let's give a virtual round of applause to Ms. Maria Cristina G. Aquino. Thank you very much, Beth. A really um, exciting times are felt already. You can feel it in your heart. You can feel it in your hand. You can feel it in the traffic that we're having right now. Uh, the traffic is not just in internet right now. It's actually the physical roads that we have as well. So uh, this, is, this webinar is the 11th as mentioned. Uh, and I'd like to make mention that we also have, uh, I just introduced Tim to you. And uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. TIPFI is an old organization. Uh, we have members from government, DOT, TESDA, UPAIT. We have private and public from industry as well as from academia. We also have from labor. We're actually looking at having some chapters already, regional chapters. And so if you've got this makeup of uh, part, uh, members in your uh, organization, give us a call or give us an email and we're, we're, we'll be happy to make coordinate with you to make sure that we're able to form a chapter in your region. Next slide. It's an old organization, uh, 1980. Where were you in 1980? Were you born already? If not, uh, this is uh, maybe a, a parent or an aunt that you have. We're actually 42 years old. Originally, it was actually called uh, the uh, Hotel and Restaurant Industry Board. Uh, however, we felt that it was very confining in terms of the sector representation. So we decided to change it into Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated. So we've been existing since 1980. We're the only surviving uh, industry board since the NMYC day, days, which predates uh, TESDA, in fact. Next slide. Our vision and mission, we had a review of our vision and mission, and we have to thank Bayan Academy, uh, specifically the late Dr. Ed Morato, who helped us review our vision and mission, make sure that it's still relevant to the current uh, situation environment that we have. So we're looking at making sure that we're able to converge government, industry, education, and training sectors, and making sure that we're able to facilitate tourism human resource development. So anything to do with tourism, as far as human resource development or human capital development is concerned, TIBFI is the name to uh, remember. Next slide. Currently, and I'd like to acknowledge, we have uh, Dr. Glow, who is with us right now. Uh, we have some of our board members who are actually watching via uh, Facebook because they're also monitoring some of the uh, questions that can be raised there. We're actually representing various organizations, HRAP, Association of Human Resource Managers, Paseos, Arme, Norain, which is labor. We also have the PTAA, Filtoa, we have our advisors from DOT, TESDA, as well as UPAIT. Next slide. Currently, we are uh, a recognized industry board from TESDA, and we were able to do that. We had to submit quite a number of documentation, and they've been inviting us to many of the activities that they have uh, with regards to uh, tourism sector in terms of training and development. We also play a significant role in the rollout or implementation of the ASEAN Mutual Recognition Arrangement on Tourism Professional. We are the designated uh, National Tourism Professional Board. And so this is an organization that actually also meets with other counterparts in the, uh, with the nine other member states of ASEAN. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, we've had quite a number of uh, webinars. You can actually visit our website and you'll find, uh, you'll find that we have the videos, we have also the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And this uh, is the link that you can get in to find uh, the videos that we have. 
this particular webinar is also going to be uh, is being recorded right now, and you'll find it also in the webinar uh, resource that we have in our website. Thank you. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, coming soon, if you can save the dates, uh, we will have on April 26 from 9 to 12 noon, uh, another webinar. It's going to be hosted by ARM, Association of Human Resource Managers, as well as PASEOS, the uh, MICE uh, National Organization. We will have the general membership meeting for all members, as well as the election of new board members or uh, re-election of some of the board members that we have. The title of the uh, tentative title of the uh, webinar is wanted industry practitioners be a test the skills assessor we've heard we've seen that there are quite a number of areas where there are no assessors for particular qualification and so we'd like to make sure that we strengthen the assessors uh, plantilla or roster of uh, uh, assessors and we'd like to invite our industry partners and I hope that you be uh, you attend this particular uh, webinar as well. We'll also have another uh, webinar coming on May 31. This is together with our partner Rex uh, uh, Education as well as our May um, on May 31. Uh, title is tentative title right now is moving tourism and hospitality education to the 4N. Why 4N? The ends are now what we have right now, because it might change next week. It might change also in the new normal that we have. And so the four ends are something that we can uh, look forward to in the coming days that we have. Our next slide is on some of the activities that we have, the future activities. We'll have a job fair together with the Raja Travel Corporation sometime the second quarter of this year. We'll also have an English proficiency competitiveness webinar in partnership with GAIN, as well as we're currently reviewing the TRs, specifically on uh, front office, housekeeping, food and beverage service, uh, uh, events. Uh, uh, there are five, actually, that we're reviewing. And we're also currently developing the competency assessment tools, as well as undertaking review of the ASEAN Common Competency Standards for Tourism Professional, as well as a common ASEAN tourism curriculum. We're also going to be a member of the steering committee for the development of the Philippine Tour Guide Qualification, which is going to be launched pretty soon. We're also going to be, uh, we're currently involved in the development of the Philippine Scales Framework, specifically for the human capital development sector, which cuts across all the different sectors uh, or different industries as either a contextualizer or a validator. Recently, we signed a lobster uh, partnership with Lobster Inc. to make it possible for our industry members as well as academic to have access to uh, learning management system content, which is going to be very uh, uh, important or critical as you upskill, reskill, or uh, cross-skill. Uh, a lot of people actually uh, maybe lost their jobs and they may want to find out how they can be meaningful or they can have the uh, qualifications that are need needed for the new jobs that are going to be available. So going to the next slide, please. We have Lobster Inc. What we have right now is a specific uh, partnership with Lobster Inc. that will allow industry partners, uh, if you see uh, some of the logos of our industry partners, as well as uh, partners from uh, education, if you can just click on the next slide. So some of these are actually being used locally already, but we have some schools that are using uh, abroad. You'll have the same content. Uh, at a very affordable price, we have been able to negotiate with Lobster Inc. to give us a preferential three, uh, price. And so if you want, you can take a look at the links that are provided here. I think there is also a QR code that is uh, going to be pressed on to the next, but I'll put all the links later on in the uh, uh, chat room uh, after my talk. Okay. Another click, please. Yes. And... Uh, if you want to contact us, we have our email, we have our Facebook, we also have our website, we have our uh, mobile number. Our website actually is undergoing a facelift. We are going to have a portion there which is going to be limited only for members. Uh, and if you can just click, uh, this is how our website looks like right now. And we also have our Facebook, 
uh, Janina? Can, yeah, there. So if you want to get information about what's, what we're doing in PIBFI, please go and visit our website as well as our Facebook account. I give this back now to Beth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mom Tina. You know, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to become a member, what are the different updates. And so all of this information are available in the TV website and of course in their Facebook page. And so there are so many things to look forward to. And uh, thank you very much for keeping us always updated, Mom Tina. I'm very um, pleased to see a lot of greetings in our chat box. And since we will not be able to read everything we're coming from, uh, we're very appreciative of the uh, posts that you're putting in our chat box. And uh, keep them coming so we can keep you engaged uh, in this uh, morning's program. At this point, we would like to give the floor to our um, very active Assistant Secretary for Human Capital Development and Industry Manpower Development from the Department of Tourism to formally welcome all of us and give the opening remarks. Let's put the spotlight on to Maria Rica C. Bueno. Sunny, good morning to all the distinguished DOP and PIP officials, resource speakers, um, participants from the tourism private sector, from the local government units, and the academic community, including students of tourism and hospitality. I would like to thank um, our dear friends from the Tourism Industry Board Foundation, led by its chair, PIP. Sorry, Ina Aquino, and of the members of the board, uh, President uh, of Filtoa, Fe Avenue, together with Arjun Schultz, and uh, Dr. Gloria Vigency, um, as well as Rex, the co sponsor for today's webinar, and also acknowledging our Office of Industry Manpower Development, uh, Director Wendell Montesilio, and our training champions. This is actually the first uh, of the T3 webinar series for 2022, entitled The Traveler's Search, Resurfing for New Experiences with, sustain with Sustainable Destinations. This is really very timely, as the Philippines has reopened its international borders last February 10th, and we have just entered summer, which is the peak season for domestic tourism, the country. With the relaxation of travel restrictions, our tourist destinations, both existing and emerging, can expect the influx of tourists once again. Just in the last three weeks, in a personal note, I have traveled to Zamboanga, Sulu, Matabato City, and now I am in Mati, Davao Oriental. Please just don't look for a beach as my background, as our training is held in a hotel. But um, we are here for the final training of the Marine Wildlife uh, Tourism Interaction Guidelines. Um, and three weeks ago, we were in Sulu for a tourism site assessment. So as you can see, the DOD really has never stopped you know, um, doing its run of audits, trainings, and um, searching and um, helping new destinations develop their uh, tourism in the respective localities. Post-COVID uh, post travelers will be really engaging or looking for more outdoor experiences, patronizing open-air facilities, and exploring new destinations. Our future tourists are not only eco-conscious or green-minded, but more than ever nowadays, they are health and safety conscious, avoiding crowded places and expecting an enhanced or improved hygiene and sanitation practices in the facilities and places they visit. COVID-19 has definitely taught us to focus on self-care, health, and well-being. And so wellness tourism is also going to be in demand now, nowadays. People can no longer wait any longer to get out to keep their sanity. 
And so even as we are all you know, excited, especially all of us in the tourism industry, to welcome back our tourists, let us carefully travel this new path we are taking in a post-COVID era. Let us remain to be responsible and more cautious in developing, opening, and even promoting our tourism sites. And all of this, of course, we do because we want to sustain you know, tourism in all of our destinations in the country. So I wish everyone a very productive and fun learning sessions today. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. Mabuhay at maraming salamat, ASEC, uh, Rika. We know you've been doing a lot of things. Of course, uh, from the Department of Tourism, there's just so many programs uh, prior to reopening and that uh, we, sh we, we can now see that there are a lot of positive developments in the industry. And so this webinar is very timely and extremely significant. And as promised, we have a great lineup of speakers for today who will provide various perspectives about the traveler's search resurfing for new experiences with sustainable destinations. Earlier, uh, you were asked, where do you wanna go? And so I think this is also the best time to again, pose the question. And um, because we're very excited for, you know, a um, couple of years, we've been staying at home, confined to a lot of restrictions. And so this is now the time to plan. And of course, as we plan, we have to ensure that we follow all the protocols and that we remain safe so that we can sustain business operations. And then at the same time, we can bring positive values, tourism values for our country. And so I'm not gonna keep everyone waiting. At this point, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is a licensed advanced open water diver and has been part of the team crafting the dive tourism program of the Department of Tourism since 2013 through the Office of Product and Market Development or OPMD. As head of the OPMD dive team, she has worked with the international and local dive industry to organize dive-centric and high-impact events such as the Anilao Underwater Shootout and the Philippine International Dive Expo, among others. From February 2019 up to February 2022, she concurrently led the DOT's attached agency and regulatory arm for diving, the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving, or the PCSSD, and formulated the health and safety guidelines for dive establishments to reopen safely during the pandemic. She also worked with the Department of Tourism and the Department of Budget and Management for the creation and approval of the organizational and staffing of the commission. She currently heads the department's product monitoring and evaluation division, overseeing the product and market development of key tourism products, such as community-based tourism program, developing tourism circuits. And for today, this is going to be the focus of her discussion, developing tourism circuits, and or the making and recreating of a new destination. Let's give a warm virtual applause for Ms. Rowena Wen Suryoso. Thank you, Beth. Good morning, Ma'am Wen. Good morning. Okay, so I see we have a presentation on. Um, so good morning to our TV officials. Uh, of course, our colleagues in the DOT, industry partners, and ladies and gentlemen. So, on behalf of our Undersecretary for Tourism Development Planning, USEC Woodrow McKeeling Jr., I am pleased to join you today to present the Department of Tourism's Community Based Tourism Program, Developing Tourism Circuits. So, as we all know, the year 2020 was unlike any other for the country's travel industry as the global pandemic and all our air travels were brought to a halt, closing all our borders to international travels. So on the foreign markets will return, this paved the way for our tourism chief to steer the department and pivot to the then 10.8% of the 12.7% contribution of the tourism industry 
to the country's GDP, which is domestic tourism. With the then shift in policy direction to domestic tourism, the Task Force on Domestic Tourism Product and Market Development was created, which mandates include the development of domestic tourism circuits and products. We are now in 2022, and two years after, we are now reopening. We have now reopened our borders to international travelers, and we are also ready to showcase our developed tourism circuits, which will enhance our competitiveness and visitor experience. So let me just uh, give you a background on how we created these circuits. So a task force on domestic product and market development uh, was created with the following functions and responsibilities. To assess existing tourism products, forge public and private sector undertakings, develop and implement strategic initiatives, coordinate the development and implementation of the marketing and promotions campaign, and undertake strategic tourism initiatives to support market development. And we also the, created an intersectoral team to conduct the validation of the readiness of local tourism destinations. Uh, this had the following functions. They conduct the site validation and inspection on the compliance with the issued guidelines of the DOT and the national agency. Conduct dialogue with the local government and the private sector stakeholders in the identified tourism destination. And to submit a report on the validation activities. So the unit is composed of our DOT regional offices, the public sector, and of course the task force with uh, the objective of the validation of the tourism circuit for inclusion in the tour programs of our partners. So this validation is uh, still ongoing at the moment. So uh, with the creation of the task force, the department took this hiatus opportunity to shift its policy direction to domestic tourism and to reboot travel and tourism. With this, the following strategic thrusts were undertaken geared towards the recalibration of tourism products to follow the new normal scenarios following the COVID-19 Number one, product development initiatives were conducted for key tourism products focusing on reimagining tourism products, capacity building for product stakeholders, implementation of local tourism products events, to push awareness and demand for products, exploration and expansion of selling points for products, introduction of recalibrated tourism products to sustain better in our opportunity market. Number two, support the development of tourism circuits and products for domestic tourism. On the market side, our thrust is to support domestic tourism market development initiatives for the identified tourism circuits and products. Number two, explore and reach out to targeted domestic market segments that will help reboot international travel. And number three, sustain presence in opportunity markets through minimal maintenance and engagement of market representatives, digital marketing and hybrid B2B and B2C events, participation in limited virtual and on-ground events and fairs to introduce recalibrated and new circuits and products. And of course, targeted familiarization trips for content generators and endorsers to introduce the new products and circuits. Number four, as part of route development, explore the mounting of new domestic and international routes to include local destinations that have reopened, as well as targeted foreign domestic markets and specialized group travel leads. Following our validation trips across the country, we now have 115 developed circuits um, with the following uh, regions participating. And still in the pipeline, we have 103 developing circuits. Okay, going into the details of these developed circuits of key tourism products. 
the department's Office of Product and Market Development conducted the following projects for the development of our destinations, diving and marine sports tourism. The Philippine International Dive Expo was conducted online for the diving community, which include industry experts, stakeholders, and dive enthusiasts. The Anilao Underwater Shootout was also revived to capitalize on the destination standing as a premium, premier underwater photography destination and to showcase the destination's readiness to accept dive tourists. Likewise, in order to capacitate dive guides and dive spotters to prepare for the assumption of travel, training programs for these local guides were conducted. To further develop our destinations, product audits, will continue to be conducted and continuing trainings will be done for local guides through dive certification programs. A guidebook on dive tourism product development will also be crafted to further help LGUs in developing dive products. In addition, this year we will be conducting the hybrid edition of the FedEx 2022 or the Philippine International Dive Expo to further establish the Philippines as a premier diving destination. So we have here the developed circuits and developing circuits um, on your screen, led by the different regions. For food and gastronomy tourism, uh, the products are incorporated in the tourism circuits being developed. In addition to this, product audits and caravans, as well as the conduct of the Kaina Food Festival, have been done over the last year to develop and promote destination destinations as hubs for food tourism products. In 2022, Roadmap for Halal and Food and Gastronomy Tourism will be developed in order to expand products currently being offered. Capacity building programs and product audits will continue to be pursued to further develop the product of destinations. For medical travel and wellness tourism, the wellness vacation program and packages, Filipino brand of wellness and Boracay culture of wellness were developed. Workshops for spa and massage therapists were also done to upskill these tourism workers in preparation for welcoming tourists. For 2022, validation of Boracay culture of wellness, which involves different tourism products, will be conducted. Filipino wellness, wellness music will also be developed as a wellness tourism product. For education tourism, the teaching skills training through the Master TESOL certification course was implemented to provide an online enhancement program for ESL teachers to equip them with relevant appropriate teaching skills and methodologies. The second edition of the Philippine Education Tourism Conference or PETC was conducted last January 2022, which showcased the Philippines as a multifaceted education tourism destination to renew our linkages with foreign industry key players. And we had more than 1,000 participating industry players in this program. Research on volunteerism is also currently ongoing, as this is an emerging education tourism product. The output for this research is a model to guide LGUs in developing their volunteerism products and an action plan for OPMD in crafting strategies to develop this product. A product audit of education tourism sites in Zambales and Pampanga was also conducted to evaluate and identify potential education tourism and volunteerism sites. In 2022, Capacity building for local stakeholders and LGUs will be implemented through the ESL Curriculum Development Training, the TESOL Certification Course, and the Tourism Education Manual, as well as product audits of potential gap year and volunteer sites. For culture tourism, culture tourism products such as religious heritage, and historical products are included in various circuits being developed as well. The culture product team was also tasked to initiate the creation of the product development manual. The rollout of the finalized manual will be done in 2022 to guide our LGUs and regional offices in the development of their tourism products. In addition to this, 
Roadmaps for halal and food and gastronomy tourism will be developed to expand the current products being offered. Capacity building programs, product audit and assessments will also be done for the different cultural tourism programs. For cruise and nautical tourism, the inspection of the Ilo Sikogon Boracay Island cruise was done to jumpstart the development of domestic tourism uh, tour circuits. This will be continued in 2022 with proposed circuits that include Manila, El Nido, Coron, Puerto Princesa, Guimaras, Kalangaman Island in Tacloban, Subic, Ilocos, Corregidor, and Tagbilaran, as well as the validation of the sole circuit in partner partnership with the DOT National Capital Region, Region 3, and Region 4. For nature based tourism, site validation and inspections of Nueva Vizcaya and Quirino were conducted in partnership with DOT Region 2. Research on nature-based tourism in the Philippines is also ongoing to explore the gaps of nature-based tourism for the crafting of relevant strategic product and market development programs. For 2022, the nature-based tourism teams will continue site validation and technical inspections for emerging destinations, training programs for local guides for hiking, surfing, bike, and ATV tours will also be conducted, as well as the development of a nature-based tourism manual for capacity building of local stakeholders. For farm tourism, product audits are continuously being done to assess farm tourism destinations for each region. For sun and beach tourism, there are currently 11 developed and 8 developing circuits. For mice tourism, there are 1 developed and 4 developing circuits today. As for the other products, currently there are 4 developed and 6 developing circuits. In addition to the circuits, the Domestic Tourism Task Force supported the regions and LGUs by means of providing funds for the development of products, circuits, and other product development activities. To date, these funds supported 159 projects across 14 regional offices and 33 LGUs and provinces. In November 2021, the DOT initiated the formulation of a product development manual which shall aid and capacitate the tourism stakeholders in creating and enhancing local tourism products. It will strategically align and streamline the end-to-end -end development process across the DOT offices, providing the department more efficiency and better supply chain management. The manual shall focus on developing the 10 priority tourism products, nature-based tourism, cultural tourism, health, wellness, and retirement tourism, mice tourism, education tourism, cruise and nautical tourism, sun and beach tourism, leisure and entertainment tourism, diving and marine sports tourism, and farm tourism. It shall also serve as the standard guidebook for all the department's product development initiatives including the identification of tourism products and product development strategies. In connection with the creation of the manual, the department, through the services of a consulting firm, conducted a series of virtual workshops last November 16 to 18, 2021, with multiple stakeholders, ranging from policy implement, local government units, and the private sector, involved in the 10 priority tourism product portfolio of the department under the national tourism development plan of 2016 to 2022 the tourism product development workshop was designed to prototype a methodology for developing tourism products in a local context and gather input and insights from the stakeholders in may 2022 the department shall then roll out for two capacity, capacity building activities with the DOT offices and stakeholders. And as of 22, 2022, uh, there, here are the product development manuals 
for dive and nature-based tourism. Number one, development and rollout of dive tourism product development manual. Development of nature-based tourism product development manual. Uh, we will also be having a webinar for nature-based tourism product and market development manual and a train the trainers for the product development and market development manual. Okay, so that caps my presentation and we look forward to forging a stronger partnership with GIVV and with allies tourism stakeholders as we welcome visitors visitors back in our shores and move toward the more vibrant tourism industry in the months and years to come. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you so much and mabuhay, Ma'am uh, Wen Serioso. Uh, we're very happy to hear about, you know, the 10 priority products as part of our um, tourism product portfolio. And uh, we've been getting a lot of inquiries later. And so I'm going to ask you these questions later when we uh, go to our uh, panel discussion. Thank you very much, Ma'am Wen. And uh, just a reminder participants for this morning, we have a link that was provided in case you have questions that you would like to direct to all our speakers for this morning. So kindly use that link and we will try our best to ask these questions when we proceed to our open forum later. So a very good walkthrough that was given to us by Mom Wen Serioso. And from the Department of Tourism, we now move on to our second speaker from the uh, accommodation sector. And uh, I'm very happy to introduce our second speaker, who is a seasoned hotelier with over two decades of experience in the hospitality industry. She started her career with front office in Manila Midtown Hotel, followed by Makati Shangri-La. In the year 2000, she moved to Sofitel Philippine Plaza, where she found her true calling in, in event sales and marketing. Later in 2011, she joined the pre-opening team of Midas Hotel and Casino as Director of Sales and Marketing, covering rooms, events, and public relations and branding, as well as hotel and casino marketing. With a stellar record in her role that, was, that has paved the way for Casino Hotel to create its own niche market, she bagged the outstanding sales and marketing leader in the first Virtus Awards in 2015. In 2016, she moved to Okada, Manila, also another pre-opening property as Director of Sales, Events, and Marketing. Three years into her job in 2019, Okada, Manila's top management recognized her strong leadership skills, wide network, and stellar accomplishments, and set up the new division, Sales and Marketing, Hospitality, and Entertainment, catering to clients' evolving needs with its diversified events venue portfolio. In 2021, she took on a bigger role as she now leads all of Okada's Manila's non-gaming revenue generating departments, namely food and beverage covering the property's top restaurants and rooms, aside from the current diversified portfolio of events, including Cove Manila. As Vice President for Sales and Marketing, Events, F&B and Rooms, our speaker has been responsible for leading her dynamic and bigger team of experienced events, f and Rooms Professionals, as one of the largest sales and marketing teams in the hospitality industry today. And the innovative programs that cater to existing new clients, further expanding its clientele base, and maximizing revenues across all non-gaming departments. This morning, she will cover the topic, Welcoming Tourism Surge, Okada Manila's Road to Recovery. Very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have Ms. Uh, Vice President Shalo Ortega Reboredo. Kabuhay and good morning, Ma'am Shalo. Good morning, Ms. Beth. Good morning, everyone. Ms. Fe Abling Yu, President of Viltoa, Mr. Cesar Cruz, Mr. Arjun Shroff, and the Board of Directors of Filtoa, Asekrika Bueno and the Department of Tourism team, Ms. Tina Aquino and Tourism Industry Board Foundation Committee, and to our audience from different industries tuned in today through Zoom. It is my great pleasure to speak today in front of you to share our company's recovery program 
as the local and international borders have reopened after two years of closure. Pado Manila is the Philippines' largest and grandest integrated resort. It is a one-stop shop where you can stay at any of our 993 rooms. You can dine at our 21 restaurants offering a world of flavors. You can meet at our diversified events venue portfolio, three ballrooms, 18 meeting rooms, the garden, the crystal corridor, the boardwalk, and Cove Manila. You can also shop at our retail boulevard and you can also play at our casino. At the onset of the pandemic, we have taken proactive measures in depth and move forward as the COVID-19 pandemic gripped the global travel, tourism, and hospitality industry. The following milestones were achieved. In February 2020, the property received its first Forbes five-star rating, elevating the brand as the preferred venue for various corporate, socials, and lifestyle event milestones. Together with Forbes Travel Guide, Digital Healthcare Share Care awarded the verified certification badge to the property. This accreditation further validates that Ocado Manila is equipped with proper and comprehensive safety protocols preventing the spread of the infectious diseases. In June 2020, we launched our treaty campaign, which stands for True Clean, True Safe, and True Heart, assuring a safe and memorable stay in our property. In March 2021, we have been granted the World Travel and Tourism Council Safe Travel Stamp, furthering our organization's commitment to safety. Pivoting to the new normal. There is a saying that one of the two things constant in this world is change. Our management puts this at the core of our leadership principles and we must go with the flow of this changing times. Pivoting to the new normal was our battle cry. We asked ourselves, how do we address the new challenges of today's business? We looked at it from a three-pronged approach called art. The first of which is ADAPT. We launched three programs in recognition of our clients' evolving needs. We rolled out our meat safe package for corporate clients, allowing them to avail of special and flexible rates to hold their events on property. We understood right away that teams could not meet face-to-face -face for meetings and recognized that while people could not dine together physically, they could still enjoy Okada Manila's signature dishes delivered to their doorstep through our plum dining or meals to go. We knew that people were scared to attend live events. So we introduced our Okada studio, assisting our clients with our state-of-the-art audio and video equipment for their hybrid and live stream events. As the COVID-19 continuously evolved and infectious surge throughout the Metro, our team worked constantly together in ensuring the safety of our clients and guests. Our second approach to this was to risk strategize. And we did so through the following ways. Our emergency services team worked side by side with our banquets and events team to repurpose our events venues. We introduced a revised capacity chart for each of our venue spaces and implemented optimal social distancing as mandated by the government. Due to limited dining capacity imposed by the government, Alfresco Dining Experience was the new name of the game across our food and beverage sector. The garden was used to launch our f and promotion called Barbecue by the Garden, allowing our guests to experience all-you-can-eat barbecue while admiring the gorgeous view of the sunset. Our boardwalk, for example, was utilized in May 2021 
through the collaboration with Nissan Philippines to launch the Relief Car, the world's first mass-produced electric car. Because parties and mass gatherings were not allowed, our Cove Manila Indoor Beach Club was also repurposed for vacation so that the guests can enjoy, can splash in our all-weather indoor pools. And lastly, we have also transferred our barbecue by the bay and introduced the barbecue by Cove. That's during the rainy season. Business is not about staying in status quo. It is about continuously looking for ways to flourish despite the ongoing challenges caused by this pandemic. Through it all, our team consistently thought of new ways to stay ahead of the game. The last of the three-pronged approach is to thrive. In October 2020, we took the first step towards the new normal in holding events and jump-started our hybrid events in cooperation with the Department of Tourism's NCR's Leadership Excellence Series Seminar at our Grand Ballroom. This initiative paved the way for us to earn our chaos or certificate of authority to operate as a staycation hotel from the DOT. Due to the closure of the borders, the market was concentrated locally. And upon reopening of the property by October 2020, we held various room promotions to encourage direct bookings. We also held limited flash sale bookings twice a year. In January 2021, we were the very first integrated resort to introduce the Okada Manila Dining Privilege Card, which extends 20% discount to our select restaurants. This card was only issued to our top corporate clients and partners. And I am humbled to say that to date, we have exceeded a 5 million peso mark. Exploring new business frontiers. At Okada Manila, we have always known that contactless mobile technology is the future. We wanted to cater to the ever mobile consumer, so we launched our business and entered the digital goods industry. Glocal, yes. We had to shift our business strategy, so we launched our select services and amenities on Shopee. And we have put together Okada Manila's flagship store in Las Mall. Lazada, Southeast Asia's largest e-commerce site branded platform. This was an added revenue stream for us, targeting the mass market. These e-commerce strategic partnerships, which is also under my wing, paved the way for the Okada Manila brand to be more reachable to the mass market. This is the art of thriving. We need to thrive in the new environment. Concentrated on the digital spectrum because now more than ever, we must be present and stay in the mind of our customers. The temporary closure of our restaurants as a direct result of the COVID-19 pandemic affected our food and beverage business. We had to explore other avenues to compensate for these revenue losses. Through strategic market alliances and partnerships, Okada Manila became one of the first integrated resort properties that have onboarded with Grab, Southeast Asia's largest TNVS or travel network service, through its Grab food platform from February 2021 to February 2022, bringing our delectable dishes closer to those who are on a work from home assignment. We envisioned Okada Manila to be an iconic destination. So we have partnered with Kluk to bring our market the latest vacation and tour packages at affordable prices. To help increase food traffic, we created curated experiences best suited to our market needs through the Kluk app. When we say exploring new business frontiers, we mean well and we went beyond what no other integrated resorts have done. Safety is at the core of our business operations ever since this pandemic began. 
we entered into our first retail partnership with Duty Free Philippines through its hotel browse and shop program, allowing our check-in guests to access DFP's online catalog and shop from the comfort of their hotel rooms. Items are delivered and accepted by our concierge team. Very convenient, isn't it? So how do we bulletproof the business? At the core and heart of the business are our employees. In order to safeguard our employees' well-being, we have implemented several measures such as work from home arrangement, mandating full inoculation of all our employees, encouraging our team members to join online wellness programs through Zoom, spearheaded by our HR team. We also required our employees to fill in a health declaration form upon arrival at the property. We truly believe that the sustainability of our business is anchored on one very important thing, our employees. And it is only through our team members that we are able to bulletproof the business. I mentioned earlier that at the core of our business are our employees. We value our team members' dedication in providing great service. We put prime importance to learning and our incredible hospitality training team organized retraining sessions for our hotel frontliners. For everyone's information, Forbes Travel Guide is the only independent global rating system for luxury hotels, restaurants, and spas. We even send out what we call hot tip training, which stands for hotel operations training short reading materials for our team members to read through at their convenient time so that they can familiarize themselves with the Forbes star. Business continuity is extremely important. The COVID-19 pandemic did not stop us from constantly staying in touch with our clients. We wanted our clients to know that even through the hard times, we remember them. So what did we do? Once our property started to reopen, my dynamic sales and marketing team comprised of room sales, f and sales, event sales, strategic market alliances and partnerships, or organized monthly sales blitz. Yes, virtual sales blitz. I am also humbled to say that most of our corporate clients and partners appreciated this small effort and we made them smile and even laugh with our interactive icebreaker introductions. This is just a simple effort, but if we all think about it by doing this, this made our property the top of mind integrated resort when our clients begin to plan their next event milestones. Even before we planned our roadmap to recovery, we have always been prepared. We had back-to-back -back events since last year, starting with the grand unveiling of our events lounge, which is where we hold office and we receive guests and clients. We also turned it into a small haven for well-known and emerging fashion designers, as well as industry suppliers and partners to showcase their creations. Every month, we feature a pair of fashion designer and event stylist so our clients can see the roster of our creative partners. This is also our way to help our friends from the fashion and creative industry to bounce back and recover from loss of livelihood over the course of two years. The grand unveiling of our events lounge is the culmination of five years of hard work in making Okada Manila the preferred venue partner of companies across various industries. We consistently hold regular promotions as well in order to capture niche markets. These regular promotions included the previous September online sale, SOS, in collaboration with HSMA, Hotel Sales and Marketing Association, making us the top seller in the Parañaque City area. Our twice a 
year flash sales, and of course, our bank tie-ups. We have just launched our JCB bank tie-up running until September 2022 to be extended until October 2022, offering 15% discount across our restaurants such as Lobby Lounge, Medi Buffet, Goryeo Korean Restaurant, the opening of Enbu, the Japanese restaurant. We have been organizing day tours, a project of our destination marketing team with a minimum voucher purchase requirement in order to avail a 15% discount. We are partnering up with reputable local tour operators, travel agencies, and marketing companies and organizations to help increase our property's food traffic. We will also launch a shuttle service between Okada, Manila to duty-free locks in Mall of Asia so our hotel and casino patrons can shop at duty-free Philippines. Lastly, we are also launching the Balikbayan Plus program soon, offering special rates to all our OFWs coming home to the Philippines. Our award-winning culinary team, headed by Chef Andreas Balia, will also be reopening our Italian Ristorante and Trattoria, La Piazza, our Japanese Robotayaki Grill Restaurant, and Boo. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open our all-Filipino buffet very, very soon called Sinag. We are also opening our Sky Lounge Villa, and our Sky Lounge. We envision our Sky Lounge to be the most beautiful bar in the Philippines. We are keeping it under wraps. That's why you do not see any photos yet. And we cannot wait to make these official announcements this second quarter. So please check our Okada Manila Facebook page for updates. I am also proud to announce that under my leadership, together with the Food and Beverage Division, we are opening another state-of-the-art glass ballroom, which have just been turned over to our team as of this presentation. Spanning 698.75 square meters, the glass ballroom can seat up to 200 guests. You can see from the interiors alone the intricate details and opulence that Okada Manila is known for. My team and I cannot wait to witness the first event to be held here, and we hope to welcome you in this event very soon. My allies and friends from Piltowa and DOT and everyone, I hope that you can consider the glass ballroom as venue for your next events. I would like to end this presentation on a very positive note. We are very humbled to say that we have exceeded our targets in the last two months, and we are above budget for January to March year to date. Today, we ended with 38 events for the month of March. It is also my honor to announce two major initiatives of Okada Manila. We will be hosting the upcoming 2022 World Travel and Tourism Council's Global Summit at Cove Manila. That will be next month, of course, in partnership with the Department of Tourism. Second, Okada Manila is now an associate member of the Korean Chamber of Commerce as we recognize Korea as one of our top markets in terms of food traffic and foreign international tourist stays. We would not have been able to surpass all these challenges and achieve success without my dynamic sales and marketing team and the rest of our internal stakeholders within our organization. Our hard work and commitment to our craft won us HSMA's Virtus Awards last December 2021 for business resiliency due to our three-pronged approach. Again, art, adapt, re-strategize, and thrive. Adapt to the changing times. Re-strategize for the new normal. Thrive in the exciting times ahead. I would like to express my deep gratitude to Peltoa with the Department of Tourism and of course the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Inc. for organizing this invaluable webinar. 
I truly hope that I was able to impart a few learnings to all of you. To quote inspirational author Laila Gifty Akita, there are more glorious days ahead. This should be your joy for today. Maraming maraming salamat po sa oportunidad na ito and uh, let's all bounce back this 2022. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Uh, Shelo Ortega Reboredo. It's not just uh, an inspiring uh, talk, but you were able to give us a lot of empowering strategies. And we would like to congratulate, of course, Okada Manila for hitting the targets through your um, ADAPT, re-strategize and thrive. So we understand that there's no status quo for Okada for the last uh, two years. You were able to craft a lot of strategies and uh, programs. And uh, of course, this is something uh, very inspiring for all the uh, businesses to, to adapt, okay? And so we'd like to acknowledge also our uh, participants in FB. Ma'am Shello, I hope you can still join us later for the open forum. Of course. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, we have close to 100 participants in FB. So if you have uh, questions, kindly type it as comments in the chat box and our tech team will try to pick it up. And uh, this is a good news uh, for all our participants. All the presentation materials of the speakers will be shared through the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated website, and it will be uploaded in the resources section together with the video recording. So I think that's very good. And uh, I think that deserves a big round of applause. Maraming maraming salamat. And of course, uh, moving on uh, to our program. I would like to introduce our third speaker. He is the Managing Director of Bienvenido Travel and Tours, a DOT accredited tour operator company. He established in 2012 to answer the call of promoting the province of Rizal as a prime tourist destination. From 2016 to 2019, he organized the annual Tayunasa Antipolo Media Tour to promote Antipolo as a top-of-mind tourist destination east of Manila. Prior to setting up his own company, he is also involved in the family business handling various departments in Laureland Farm Resort and Ulheta's Hong Garden Spa. Both resorts are top tourist destinations in the city of Antipolo. He was a trustee of the Philippine Tour Operators Association or Filtoa, in 2016 to 2017, an active exhibitor in the Philippine Travel Mart from 2014 to 2019, and a member of Ata Calabarzon. He has appeared in several TV shows, broadsheets, online articles, and radio in line with his work of sales and marketing. Ramon, as he is fondly called, finished his Bachelor of Arts in Legal Management at the University of Santo Tomas in 2005. He completed a business program at UPISSI in 2009, and he was a certified FBSSE trainer. I think this is food and beverage service educator trainer by the Department of Tourism in 2019, a Filipino brand of service by the Department of Tourism in 2019. On his spare time, he likes to swim, watch performing arts and travel to the countryside. He has three dogs, namely Bogart, Aura, and Asher. And he is a truly certified fur parent like most of us here. And uh, for this morning, he will be tackling on uh, this topic about knowing your business and marketing and itinerary, the five W's and one H. Very interesting. So let's give a virtual round of applause to the managing director of Bienvenido Travel and Tours, Mr. Ramon Mon F. Marias. Mabuhay, magandang araw po, Sir Mon. Mabuhay, everyone, and to our dear guests from the academic sectors, most especially most of our audience here are students. I am very happy to be part of this webinar for today. Allow me to start my presentation by sharing to you a quote by one of my favorite authors, Simon Sinek. He said, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. And working hard for something we love is called passion. 
And this is true to all of us here who are gathered on this webinar. We may come from different var and various sectors of the tourism industry, but we are united in our efforts to bring back the golden age of tourism. It is that burning desire to work hard for the industry that keeps us all together. And now as we navigate the world of traveling tours in the new normal, yes, let me remind everyone about the word focus. No? So what do, we, what do we mean by F-O-C-U-S? First, by F, we, we mean finding your passion in following your heart. So since most of our audience here are from the academy and students, by now you have uh, identified your passion. Some of you will be joining the culinary business. Some of you would want to uh, put up your own business as soon as you graduate. Many of you would like to join the airline industry. And some of you would like to put up your own cafe. So whatever passion you have right now, hold on to that and follow your heart because that will help you define your career later on as you graduate from the university. O, what is O? Observe the latest trends, be updated of new and upcoming destinations and travel advisories. As you notice, for the past two years, there was a popularity in cycling. Since most people were stuck at home, uh, movements were limited, a lot of us would want to go out. And one of the best things that we would like to go is to, uh, to visit the countryside by cycling. And then here in the province of Rizal, there was a proliferation of cafes along the highways in Marilake. There were many cyclist enthusiasts who would visit Antipolo, even as far as Tanay in the province of Rizal, because they would want to go out of their house. So as we move on, as we go on with knowing our business, we need to be updated of the latest trends. So number two, there were uh, most of us would want to be in an outdoor setting al fresco. So cafes became a, a popular destinations. Number three, how do we understand? And for example, you would want to put up your own cafe, cooperate with experts in the travel industry, look for a mentor. Just like what we're doing now, we're doing this uh, webinar with distinguished panelists from the DOT, TIVT, Filtoa, and Rex Education. It is for us to uh, always ask for questions. If you are interested in putting up your own business, let's collaborate, participate, and join webinars like this. Number four, understand the business by being inquisitive and always asking. So, since we understand the latest trends of, uh, of the business, we can put up our own cafe and uh, a lot of us would want to be outdoors. Let's try to understand by knowing more about the business by always asking our, our mentors. And finally, satisfy yourself, partners, and guests in everything that you do. Here is actually a photo of a family. This was just taken last, last week who went out on a trip after two years of staying home. So me being the designated tour operator and tour organizer of the family was the one who organized the trip. So from the accommodation, transportation for the food and the itinerary that we'll be visiting, I was the one who organized it. And then true enough, everyone enjoyed because it has been almost two years that uh, we were stuck at home and it was a respite for everyone to be together again for, for the longest time. And now moving on, let us talk about marketing and itinerary and the five W's and IH. The five W's of communication are five words that begin with the letter W. We focus on them when we want our communication to be effective. These are helpful in marketing planning as well. The development of an effective marketing program requires that they be answered in a specific order. Why, who, what, where, and when. 
The reasons may not be obvious, but by the following the pathway, we can avoid a great deal of confusion, trial and error, blind alleys, and preserving companies' precious time and resources. Let me quote another. Uh, let me quote Simon Sinek again. He said, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. Let's all start with why. Let's look at this logo by the Department of Tourism. It's all familiar to us. It's more fun in the Philippines. Does it answer the question why? Definitely, no? Because why should our clients and guests do what we want them to do? Because we want them to have fun when they visit our destination, the Philippines. Next, why do we promote this tour package? Again, it answers the question that uh, we are promoting this tour package because the, we guarantee and we ensure that they will have a fun experience when they visit the country, the Philippines. And why do we target a specific market? For example, when we are targeting the Balik Bayans who are coming home to the Philippines, especially in the month of November, a lot of them would want to plan in advance and we need to be uh, targeted on their uh, audience. Four, why choose the supplier over the other? For example, when choosing an airline, of, uh, when you're coming to the Philippines, would you, you want to take the direct flight provided by the Philippine Airlines or there are other airlines uh, that will have another destination or stopover? So this is the question that we ask to ourselves when we ask the question, why? Finally, why include this activity in the itinerary? No? So there are many questions that we need to answer before we come up with an itinerary. And marketing this plan, marketing this itinerary would definitely help us if we answer the first question that is why. Next, who? As you can see in this photo, the, the question who is already answered here. No? Who are our clients and guests? Are these balikbayans, seniors, children, uh, students? Many of you here are students. Who are my suppliers? Will you be able to identify your transport sector provider, provider your accommodation, uh, the tour guide who will be part of your tour? Who else? The restaurants that you'll be visiting. These are the suppliers that you need to identify. Next, who will be part of my team? In organizing a tour, definitely you need a team who will help you organize the itinerary. So you need a tour guide, a person in charge in the office to do the coordination, and then a sales person who will be responsible for answering inquiries of our guests. No? Who will, who will be my ground handler, especially when you're visiting the countryside? If you're not very familiar with the destination, you would need to connect with a local ground ha handler for them to be able to conduct the tour. And then finally, who will provide LGU assistance? If you need assistance from, for example, the tourism office or the provincial tourism office, you need to be in touch with them so that everything will be coordinated and that, that the tour will be uh, uh, provided easily to our guests. So that's the second question, which is who. Fine. Next, we answer the question, what? If you can see this image, what can, if you can uh, identify this, this is a Minaluto, a local cuisine in the town of Angono, Rizal. This is a special dish composed of seafood and um, turmeric rice and vegetables. So these are the questions that we need to answer when we are coming up with an itinerary. What are my clients and guests looking for? Are they into culin culinary arts? Are they into adventure tourism? Are they interested in uh, pilgrimage? Or are, do they just want to have a rest and recreation, a relaxed holiday? So we need to answer that. What are they looking for? Next, what are their, what are their interests? So some of them would want to uh, visit 
uh, art galleries. For example, in the province of Rizal, we have a lot of art galleries in Angono and Antipolo. So we need to identify if they're interested in visiting art galleries. Same with food, uh, food and culinary tourism. There are a number of places that you can visit here in this Rizal where you can experience this one. Next, what are their requests? Do they have any uh, food allergies and restrictions? What are the things that they don't want in an itinerary? Probably most of them don't want a very packed itinerary because they just want a relaxed uh, tour. Next, what are their food restrictions? So we have to be very particular in identifying if they have any allergies or if they are restricted to pork, especially when you have Muslim guests coming in, you have to identify this uh, question. Next, where? This is the fourth W that we need to identify. Where should we publish and promote this tour package? No? Are we going to promote this online, in newspapers, magazines, in uh, TV or radio? Where do we get our clients? Do we get them from Travel Marts? In uh, September of this year, Phil Towal will be holding his uh, Philippine Travel Mart. So this is a good chance for us to get clients in that event. No? Next, where do we start our itinerary? Let's say they're coming from the hotel. Do we need to fly them out of Manila as soon as they arrive here? Or they can stay at least one night in Manila? and experience Intramuros in the old town of uh, Intramuros, in experience the old town of Manila. So next, where do we accommodate our guests? Maybe we can accommodate them in Okada or in any hotels in uh, Bay Area or in Rojas Boulevard. Or if not, we can accommodate them in Manila or Tigas Business District or even in uh, the pro nearby provinces like Rizal and Laguna. And next, where is the nearest hospital in case of emergency? So these are the things that we need to identify before coming up with an itinerary. Finally, we need to identify when. As you can see in this photo, this is a nice uh, a photo of our friends who had an experience of swimming by the sunset cruise. So is this, the be is this the best time to do this activity by sunset or in the morning? So we need to identify that one. Next, when is the best time to do this activity? Most of the uh, tiring activities or adventure activities can be done in the morning so that it won't be too hot when it, uh, uh, in, in noontime or in the afternoon because a lot of us don't want to be really exposed in the sun. No? When is seal season? We have to identify, especially the seal season this coming year that many of our destinations are opening. Uh, we can look forward to the travel mart of Piltowa in September because that's a great time for us to purchase hotel vouchers for our trip next year. We also need to identify when is peak and low season. So now, for the months of March till May, this is peak season. And then from June to August, well, as they say, the uh, ghost month, that is considered as the low season. No? So we have to identify those. Next, when is hot and rainy season? If we have guests coming in here during winter in the United States, they will, a lot of our guests are here in the Philippines because it's already winter in the US and they, they want to experience uh, the hot season here, so this is the best time for them to visit. Yes, we have to identify the weather as well. And next, when is the busiest travel season of the year? So especially now that Balik Bayans are coming in December, no, this, is, uh, this would be the biggest uh, time of the year when they, they can travel. Next and final. Sorry. So next and final, how? How do we measure guest satisfaction? Uh, this is a photo of my team where, we, where I conducted the Filipino brand of service excellence. So we conducted this about last year in December as we were preparing for uh, the opening of our business. 
we made sure that they are equipped with the Filipino values so that by the time of uh, February when we reopened, we will be able to impart in them the Fili uh, Filipino good values. How do we encourage foreign tourists and uh, to visit our country? No? So first we start with our uh, family abroad. We invite them to come here, especially now that uh, for, for the past two years they haven't visited. This is the best time for, for them to visit. Next, how do we entice locals to travel within the country? No? So for us, especially for me, uh, this was a great time for me to rediscover the region of Calabarzon. And uh, for now, I can say that I have visited uh, the five regions as soon as the restrictions were, were eaten up. No? Next, how do we ensure that the tour is safe and pleasant now that most of our guests are very particular with safety and sanitation? And finally, how much are we selling this tour package? Of course, most of our guests would want to have affordable and reasonable rates. And now that the prices of fuel are increasing, we have to consider their um, uh, capability to purchase Yes, no? Your purchasing power. So we have to consider the price as well. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay ang turismo ng Pilipinas. So in conclusion, in marketing to the modern traveler, one will always ask the why each time they embark on a new journey. And it is when the whys are answered that a, that a decision is made to pursue travel. The rest of the W's, who, what, where, when, and how, follow based on the clarity of why. To all our partners in the tourism industry, DOT, TV, Piltowa, and Rex Education, thank you for having me as one of your resource speakers on today's webinar. It is an honor to be one with esteemed guests and panelists in sharing this advocacy of education to our, to, to our tourism stakeholders. I wish I had more time, but I'm limited to only 15 minutes. Mabuhay po sa ating lahat. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Mon Marinas. In short span of time, we learned a lot from you, the five W's and one H. And of course, we've been having an acronym overload. Earlier, we had ART, and now uh, in your presentation, we had FOCUS, which stands for Find Your Passion, Observe Latest Trends, Cooperate with Various Stakeholders, understand the needs of your customers and of course satisfying them. Maraming maraming salamat. And of course, I would like to remind all our participants just in case you have questions for all our uh, speakers for this morning, kindly uh, put them in your chat box and uh, we will try to pick them up so we can ask our speakers later on when we get to our uh, panel discussion. Once again, this uh, webinar is being brought to you by the Department of Tourism, the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, Filtoa, and Rex Education. So maraming maraming salamat po to our co-partners for this morning. On to our program. Of course, uh, we have our next speaker who is an economist with, with an extensive research portfolio in the areas of tourism development, poverty, remittance, Integration, entrepreneurship, international trade, and development economics. This includes his attendance in a succession of both international and local academic conferences and authorship of numerous scientific and technical publications. He obtained his Doctor of Philosophy and Economics from the De La Salle University School of Economics. He is currently the Associate Director of the Asian Institute of Management, Dr. Andrew L. Tan Center for Tourism. Let's all welcome with a warm virtual applause, of course, to discuss the new role of the academe in planning new destinations, Dr. John Paulo Rivera. Dr. JP, magandang umaga at mabuhay. Hi, good morning everyone. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat and I am very honored to be part of this webinar organized by the Department of Tourism, TVP and Filto and of course Rex Publication. And it's a privilege to be here and share with you the new role of the academe towards planning, planning new tourism products and services. So if I may be allowed to share my screen. Okay, there. So again, the topic of my presentation to you, my sharing with you, is the new role of academe in planning new destinations. So I am happy to see that most of the participants here are coming from the academe, faculty, students, and researchers. So 
I would like to share with you our role, no? emphasize our role in our beloved tourism industry. But before that, I would like to show you something. Okay. So I got this from the Saimago Journal Index. And this is the amount no? or the volume of knowledge as represented by research that has been generated by researchers, by, by academicians in the area of tourism. And I am showing to you now the top 20 countries in Asia that has produced uh, tourism or that has produced knowledge in tourism and hospitality. And the Philippines, we are in no, the top 20. No? We, are, we are ranked 15 no? from the production of knowledge from the year 1999 to year 2020. So if this is the Miss Universe beauty pageant, we are not in top 10. No? So it just shows the, the need for every one of us no? to be able to contribute more to the knowledge that we have as far as tourism and hospitality is concerned. So why, why did I show you this one? Because one of the primal roles no, of the academe in our industry, especially now that we are moving no, towards a new and better normal post-pandemic period, is that we need all the knowledge, the scientific knowledge that we need to be able to catapult the tourism industry back to its performance before. But in a much better manner. And that can only be generated through the creation of knowledge, okay, as done by, you know, as, as done by researchers, by academicians, of course, with the help of the industry. Okay? And the knowledge that the academic sector is generating through the research you know, that it has been conducting will serve as input, you know, as feedback. You know? not only to the industry, but to the academe itself. Okay? Because the research that the academe is generating can also serve as input to the curriculum no, that, we are, that we have right now being taught to the students because these students are the ones who's going to enter the industry in the future. It's like a systemic, no, a cyclical process. And the academe is there no, as the partner of the industry in creating feedback, no? in sharing feedback to the industry that is honest, specific, balanced, no? and encourage a more effective behavior of all tourism stakeholders, may it be in the academe or may it be in the industry. This is Lisa from Harvester's Revenants. Oh, may inquire lang kasi ako ng bataan for April 16 and 17 for Okay, there. No? So as I was saying, you know, the academe is in a position to provide the 50% no, of the information that we all need and that's in the form of feedback that is honest, specific, balanced, and encourage effective behavior of all tourism stakeholders. So the feedback that the academe is actually generating may be what you want to hear. It may also be what you do not want to hear. So it's really balanced. It's really balanced. But then, why is that very important? Especially now, no? It's because, uh, if you're seeing this uh, image here, what does this mean? What am I trying to show you here? That feedback mechanism between the academe and the industry only indicates one thing. The industry needs academic intervention as much as the academia needs the industry. Both sides of the coin provide feedback, provide inputs so that together we are able to improve further, develop further, innovate no? our tourism and hospitality industry. So in short, nothing has really changed with the role of academe. It just became more intense no? now that we are trying to uplift again the tourism and hospitality industry. So something no, to consider from what Akadim found through research in the past two years. Okay. So the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry stakeholders no, need to recognize that this pandemic is A, and this is from research that has been done all over the world, no, okay, as a transformative opportunity, as a transition event. Okay. 
where systemic modifications can be introduced no? to an industry that seems to have that seems to have no? some of the some defective systems that needs to be improved and this is what they said no? so something again to consider no? and the impact of the seemingly no? defective system were not profound before no? were not profound enough to be observed prior to the pandemic but it just suddenly became overwhelming no? during the pandemic when existing explanatory models suddenly failed no? when the pandemic disrupted not only the tourism industry, not only the hospitality industry, but the fact that it has disrupted multiple scales no? encompassing economic, sociopolitical, and environmental facets that the tourism industry belongs to. Okay? It just suddenly became profound. Therefore, what does that mean? Okay, so some suggestions, no? So the suggestions of academe, no? Founded by research all over the world, no? When you plan for new tourism products, services, and destinations, no? Okay. So the, the suggestion is this. The modern problems that we have now requires modern solutions because the same old thinking will only generate the same old results when in fact we are now in a new environment. And the role of academe, oh, just like all the teachers, all the faculty who are here, the, the role of the educational sector is to actually point you, point the industry, point the students, point everyone to how we can craft that solution. Why? It's because the academe may not be in the position to tell a hotel, a tour operator, what to do. Because each and every one, we have our own heterogeneous or different needs, no? different requirements, but we point you no? to that to the kind of thinking, to the kind of mentality, to the kind of assumptions that will allow us, no? decision makers, policy makers, practitioners, no? to craft modern solutions that will solve modern problems. Okay? As what Albert Einstein has actually said. No? I'll just skip that. Okay? We cannot solve our problems using the same line of thinking when we use, or that we use, when we created them. Therefore, okay. Okay. So something to think about. No? This is something to think about as what has been generated by research when you do tourism planning. Okay. Before, mass tourism was very popular, but because of the lessons from the pandemic, it may not be the it may not really be the way to go. Because as we all know, the Philippines has a fragile tourism products and destination. And the physical and social distancing actually changed the game. Okay? And because of that, many business models have also changed or needs to be changed. Okay? And that these business models would have to be adjusted to cater to the new preference of our travelers. So we're telling you that. But the specific action plans on how you can do that, okay, it has to be discussed on a deeper level. Therefore, given this, academy is pointing us to be virus, no? fight the virus like the virus. No? We need to mutate. No? As tourism stakeholders, we need to mutate. We need to, to have a new variant no? of tourism stakeholders that will revisit sustainable tourism, which has been a flagship program of our Department of tourism, to protect, no, to preserve our fragile tourism destination. At the same time, still provide employment to many of us. Okay? There. So, to conclude, okay, because the tourism industry is continuously facing challenge, one example of that is the pandemic, we only have three choices. Either we deny it, but it will keep coming back. Either we run from it, but it will follow us. But either but we can also go ahead, accept it, mutate, adjust to it, and the industry will continue to grow. And the decision is yours. Okay. Similarly, in a similar fashion, wherein exercise makes you feel better, so does tequila. No? And the decision is yours to make. Okay. And as a final word, no? from the academe, we encourage everyone to rethink today's approaches to solve our problems tomorrow. And on that note, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, JP, for that uh, very
good uh, presentation on how the academe can really propel changes in terms of how we look at things in terms of how we produce our graduates so that the industry will be you know will be more um you know co well coordinated um actions between academe and in the industry and of course uh, towards the end it made us reflect <laughs> it's a very short presentation but uh it made us reflect on the things that we should be doing and that we should be you know uh thinking about in the future so that we can have a very good moving forward actions. Marami salamat, uh, Doc JP, and of course, uh, we would like to invite you once again later for our open forum. At this point, I would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, our last but definitely not the least speaker, who is an experienced development and technology licensing professional with significant international experience and proven track record in intellectual property management technology transfer and licensing, commercialization of novel technologies, and new venture creation for small and large companies. She has over 10 years of experience developing, negotiating, and administering research, licensing, and commercial agreements. She is a highly skilled professional in valuation, out licensing, and monetization of intellectual property. This expands to multi multicultural negotiations and in structuring public-private partnerships with universities and other academic institutions, public research organizations, technology startups, SMEs, and public corporations. She finished her BS and MS degrees in agriculture biotechnology from the University of the Philippines, and she obtained her executive program in business management from the Wharton School of Pennsylvania and a program on negotiation from Harvard Law School. She has an extensive professional experience and currently she provides consulting and professional support services in research and business development in various sectors servicing clients in agriculture, biotechnology, food and health, engineering, aviation, diagnostics, medical and software industries, and currently she's a consultant of Digitis LLC Philippine Global Explorers. For this morning, her presentation will center on rediscovering Sulu Island as a destination, a partnership initiative of the Philippine Global Explorers. Friends, let us all welcome on the virtual stage, Ms. Sonrisa Rasco Ord. Uh, thank you, Beth. Um, good afternoon to, to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all. That was a long introduction, but uh, I'm here today wearing my travel hat uh, in front of you all and as a member and leader of the Philippine Global Explorers. So let me just share my slide. Uh, with you. All right. So I'm going to uh, talk about the rediscovery of Sulu Island uh, because um, uh, I think that amongst all all the things that we do in Philippine Global Explorers that is relevant to today's theme. Um, uh, just trying to figure out how this moves. <laughs> okay, so the, the, I, this is the outline of my presentation today. And uh, most of you have probably not heard of Philippine Global Explorers, so I wanted to devote uh, a few minutes to introduce ourselves, who we are, how we can help, uh, our and our areas of focus. Then I'm going to then talk about our uh, project uh, on Sulu uh, as an upcoming destination, which is actually a partnership initiative, and I'm very excited to talk to you about uh, this partnership initiative, which is quite unique. And, and then I'm going to talk to you about what Sulu offers, as uh, Sulu Island offers to uh, tourists and 
And finally, I will summarize the key points of my, um, of my talk. So, so first, who are we? We are a global community of the most traveled Filipinos. Um, our members are either born in the Philippines or are, they are born abroad by uh, Filipinos. Um, so there has to be a Philippine heritage amongst uh, in our membership. And currently we are over 650 members who are located in all uh, the continents uh, of the world, uh, except Antarctica. And um, we are all, uh, we have traveled to at least 20 countries and territories. Uh, that's a requirement for um, our, our, our membership. We have uh, PGE chapters. We have chapters worldwide and chapter coordinators uh, who um, bring all our members together and our members are all from all walks of life. So there are attorneys, uh, there are uh, scientists, there are um, uh, uh, soldiers, there are uh, people involved in the uh, uh, IT, um, uh, name it, we have, uh, uh, we have um, members from, from all walks of life who have and we have members also with from humble uh, beginnings. And so just, just to share with you that not all, all our members are rich. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be rich to, to travel. Um, you simply need to prioritize travel uh, in your life uh, to be able to travel as much as uh, most of our members do. And we are a global community, so uh, we ha hold monthly uh, Zoom calls and nakakatuwa nga yung mga Zoom calls namin eh, kasi, um, which we do every month. We talk about specific topics. We talk about destination, everything that could uh, help us uh, with our, meet our travel goals. Um, and we invite international guest speakers as well. And we talk about tools that we need for, for traveling. Uh, so pretty much everything that would uh, help us uh, meet our travel goals. And so uh, we do a monthly Zoom calls. We have monthly Zoom events where, um, you know, uh, we have members participating across the world from all six continents and in one Zoom call. So. And we have meetups uh, whenever we have one member traveling to another region that kind of triggers a meetup uh, for, for that region. And, um, as, and we also travel together. So recently uh, there was a group of PGM members who went to Antarctica. So we, uh, we also travel together. Um, so, uh, camaraderie is is very strong uh, in our uh, community. So this is just to give you an overview of uh, our members, um, and these pictures were taken from uh, all over the world. So we started as a travel club, um, and we. Uh, the club was founded in uh, July 2019, and and the idea was uh, we to bring together all the like-minded Filipinos who love to travel, and that we would uh, share tips, we would inspire one another, we would support each other. So that was the start, uh, but um, we were not content about just being a a group of people who traveled. And so we took it another step, uh, another uh, level up. We incorporated uh, as a nonprofit organization uh, last year. And, and so our mission as a nonprofit organization is, is really to use the strength of our network, our collective knowledge, our experiences and skills to serve 
the Philippines. And, and this has been our founding principle. No doubt, it's a privilege to be able to travel and to travel uh, uh, around the world. And so uh, for us, the privilege to travel the world comes with a duty to give back to one's country. So what we're trying to do is based on that foundational principle, we're trying to pull everyone together, all the Filipino travelers, our community, pull them back to our motherland and, and for them to give their time, their skills, their um, experiences, their knowledge uh, to help uh, grow uh, and strengthen our travel and true tourism in industry. So who, so, um, so currently here are the officers of, uh, of the PGE and our board members. There's myself is the president and chairman of the board uh, of the company. And then we have attorney Domini Darbuhain uh, of Rex uh, Publishing. He's the vice president of programs also our vice chairman and secretary. And then there's Don Don Ballas, um, who is vice president of operations and our board member. And he is uh, an author as well. We, I will uh, talk about his book uh, in a, in shortly. But uh, Don Don is based in Australia and in, in Melbourne. Then we have Francisco, uh, who's based in New Jersey in uh, the United States. He's our Vice President of Internal Affairs. He takes care of membership and me membership activities. Uh, he is also a board member. And then we have Nolan Tianco, uh, uh, Vice President of External Affairs and our treasurer. And uh, Sheena Shroff, uh, the, the, the newest addition to our, um, to our team, uh, who is Vice President of Business Development uh, and also a board member. So of six, uh, there are four of us based in the Philippines, myself, Attorney Buhain, Nolan Tianco, and Sheena uh, Shroff. Uh, Don Don is, as I said, based in Australia. Rambi is in the United States. So um, it, we have built our organization yeah, quite uniquely and um, our members have inspired uh, many, especially in the international travel community. And so we've had very strong media presence and have appeared in these publications. You can see in the National Geographic, uh, in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, we've been uh, featured uh, at least twice in the, in the Daily Inquirer. In the Manila Times, uh, we've been cited uh, and then uh, we have appeared in various uh, Filipino news magazines abroad, in Australia, in the UK, in Canada, in the United States. Uh, we are also uh, recognized and are featured by International Travelers Network, Every Passport Stamp, Traveler Century Club, Nomad Mania, Most Traveled People. Uh, nomad mania and most traveled people are the authorities in who is the most traveled uh, person in the world. And um, there, there is a ranking. They, they are the authority in, in ranking the world travelers. And some of our members uh, are in, in that list. Um, and, and we have, of course, our own Facebook pages, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, travel blogs. We appear in travel blogs, particularly by uh, Filipino bloggers. And, um, and la last but not the least, Gala. Uh, it's a book that was published uh, recently, last year, by our very own uh, Don Don Valles. And if you have... Uh, if this is the first time you hear about this book, um, you know, it's available in Amazon and it features the top 20 uh, most traveled Filipinos. So if you want to know who your top 20 most traveled Filipinos are who have traveled to more than 100 countries, um, they are 
uh, featured in this book and you will know their backgrounds. You know, where, where they're from in the Philippines, what they do for a living and, and how they travel, everything uh, to do with, um, uh, you know, um, we'll give you an idea of what the profile is of, of your world travelers. And it is a well-written book. And, and as I said, it's, it's, um, it's in Amazon. You can purchase it in Amazon. And I'm always very um, proud to see this book because um, I told you earlier, we are a community of travelers who support each other's travel uh, related goals. And Don Don has aspired to become an author. And if, if it not for this community, it would probably would have, uh, would have been more difficult for him to write this book. But because there is this community uh, of uh, uh, within PGE who collaborated with him, um, it made it a lot easy to publish this book. So and just to show you that there, there is a real, real support within our community to make everyone's dreams and goals uh, reachable. So how can we help? You're wondering, we have all these uh, profile. Um, this is who we are. So how can we help? Um, basically, we're not trying to become a tour operator, any one of you. Uh, and your organizations. Just look at us as a resource for you. Uh, think crowdsourcing. We are a source of crowdsourced data uh, for you. Um, and, um, you know, uh, benchmarking, benchmarking is important to help business identify the areas where we, um, there, there are gaps and, and opportunities for, for improvement. So we offer that benchmark breadth and depth of travel, Filipinos of all ages, all income levels, all walks of life, and incredible diversity of travel experiences and thinking. Um, you have that as a resource and, and, and just pl please be aware of that. We are also consumers of travel. Um, and uh, in the tourism business, as in, of, as in other businesses, it is important to know your customers and our credibility as consumers of travel is undisputable. Uh, we can be a bridge between the goals of our local tourism businesses and the international customers they are trying to reach. We have access to a broad network of international travelers. We're amongst them. And uh, our future collaborators, uh, any one of you would be able to tap into our external uh, relationships. And, uh, but we have decided um, on areas to focus on. It cannot, be, it, it cannot be everything. We're working on our areas that are dear to our hearts uh, and that we are passionate about. Um, and so these are the areas of focus for us, education, leadership, partnership, advocacy, international relations. So education, uh, we want to be able, learning is important uh, when we travel uh, and, and we inspire our youth to travel, there has to be an element of education, uh, of learning. Leadership. Uh, to be honest, our aspiration is to be a st strategic thought partner for our leaders in the industry, uh, for the DOT, for uh, TIVV. Um, we want to help solve problems. We have many problems to solve. And uh, just know that uh, you have us as resources. Partnership. We want to develop collaborative relationships with the domestic tourism, with the local tourism industry to help them achieve their goals. And Sulu is one such uh, clear project for us uh, currently, which I will uh, talk about um, shortly. Advocacy, we, are, uh, we want to preserve our cultural and historical heritage and make them accessible uh, for tourists, uh, for our travelers. Uh, we are also concerned about 
sustainable and responsible travel. And lastly, international relations. Um, we would like to take part in uh, facilitating the entry of Filipinos into other countries for tourism purposes. So at the very uh, minimum, at the very least, uh, we want to go with reciprocity, meaning if uh, we make it easy for one country, for people from certain nations to enter our country, then they should reciprocate it. They, it sh they should make it also easy for us to enter their, their countries. Um, I think that's a good start for, uh, for uh, international relations and making sure that, you know, our own citizens are able to, um, uh, to travel. Um, with um, as much ease as other uh, nationalities. So I will now uh, talk about uh, our, our project in, in Sulu. So I was in Sulu Island uh, two weeks ago, um, visited Sulu hosted by the, uh, the Philippine army, um, the battalion that is, is based there and um, I also invited um, Charles Vili. Mr. Charles Vili is one of the wor world's most traveled uh, people. And he is the founder of Most Traveled People, um, an authority in ranking uh, world travelers worldwide. And he has, um, uh, he, res he represents uh, the international community. So it was very good to have him with us on the strip. Um, and so, so I'm just going to show you, share with you some of the photos taken from that, uh, from our trip a couple of weeks ago. And um, so this was taken uh, inside one of the camps uh, over there. Our Philippine army is doing a great job over there. They are winning the war against terrorism. And um, you, it's, it's really very touching to see how they are all passionate about, um, about achieving peace in Sulu Islands. Um, there are currently 9,000 soldiers in Sulu Island and they are looking for 14 Abu Sayyaf. Um, and after our visit, um, I don't know if you, if you, uh, it, if you saw it in the news, but nine Abu Sayyaf members surrendered to the to this battalion um, a few days after we left. Uh, they are um, they are doing a fantastic job, and everyone now is looking forward. Um, they to bringing in tourists is important for them because it's a measure of their success, and and so we are. Uh, travelers, uh, tourists are, are welcome um, uh, to go there. You know, it's, the situation is not quite 100% safe, but we are, we are getting there. Um, and and uh, PGE is now involved in helping bring Sulu at the forefront of Philippine and international tourism. Following our visit, um, I'm going to be leading a group of uh, travelers from the Philippine Global Explorers to go back to Sulu Island. And Mr. Charles Vili is also going to bring a group of uh, extreme travelers, uh, uh, international extreme travelers. And, um, and, and these are, extreme travelers are uh, a special kind of travelers who, who like to go to unique destinations off the beaten path. They want to be the first to visit uh, areas uh, that are not um, yet, um, you know, uh, popular uh, or not yet, um, yeah, uh, um, uh, experiencing mass, tur mass tourism. And, um, and basically, if we bring between our groups, the PGE and the most traveled uh, people's group uh, and the extreme travelers, um, we would create some publicity. Uh, we would be able to showcase what Sulu has to offer. And, um, 
And hopefully that will pave the way, uh, trailblaze for mass tourism in the area when they can see that, you know, there are more people going into, into the island. And um, uh, this is just to show you that, you know, our government has um, is working on the program from terrorism, terrorism to tourism. And here is uh, me and Mr. Vili with the uh, Sulu Provincial Tourism Officer and the mayor uh, of, um, um, of uh, Patiko in Sulu Island. Um, so again, this is a partner initiative of the PGE, the AFP and the Sulu Provincial Tourism Office. It's a work in progress, uh, but you know, uh, the, um, you know the, the situation is improving and it's, it's looking good. So what, what's, does Sulu, um, what, what, what does Sulu offer to, to tourists? I, I keep telling them, don't become like, the, don't compare yourselves to Boracay. You do have white beaches, but you are not Boracay and you have, you know, some ways you have more to offer than, than Boracay. Sulu Island packs a punch for the diversity of experience and, and wealth of learning it offers to visitors. First, the Islamic heritage, right? We need to embrace that. You know, how many million Muslims are there in, in the world. There are about 2 billion Muslims in the world. We should embrace our Islamic heritage and target the Muslim market to come to the Philippines. Um, and they would go to Sulu. Um, Sultanate history, um, there's so much history to learn over there. Our, our Sultanate colonial history, the Spaniards and the Americans were, were there. And now our military history. Um, once peace, peace is truly achieved, there is a lot of anecdotes and, and stories of how our military won the battle against terrorism. That is a story to tell our youth, our, our, young, um, uh, uh, our young people, the next generation. Ethnic communities. We have the Tausugs, the Bajau, the Sama, um, we, there's a lot to learn about our, our ethnic communities and their, and their culture. That's so exciting, especially for foreign travelers. Holo City, they have a really good museum, uh, the mosque, the lighthouse that was turned into a mosque. They have great public spaces. Um, and I said, as I said, they have good white beaches, there's diving, there's hiking, there are mountains there to climb and there are and those mountain peaks have are rich in history They're, those are where battles were won and lost um, birding fishing photography textiles coffee sulu coffee i had no idea how good sulu coffee is it is really really uh, good we have a seaweed industry and pearl farming we have tropical fruits and we have seafood so all that in one small island. Um, so I just wanted to um, share a, a few pictures that were taken from, from that trip. So as I said, we have white beaches in, in the Sulu and Sulu archipelago. Uh, Islamic heritage, we should embrace it and uh, sell ourselves to the Muslim market. Uh, preserving our historical heritage. Uh, we visited a cemetery there where the royal uh, family of, of the um, sultan um, are, are, are buried and you know that we need to showcase uh, these these sites there's a lot we need to do uh, to do a lot of work to improve the site uh, for uh, for um, for for tourists um, but this is what we're saying. We need to preserve our historical heritage and we're kind of PGE is giving feedback uh, to the local, to uh, the uh, tourism office as to what uh, they could uh, be working on. And uh, the city, uh, city tours, uh, we have beautiful public buildings and spaces. Uh, if you've not 
if you have not been to the Sulu provincial capital, there are beautiful artwork there by local artists. Um, and then a military fight for peace history. Uh, Buddhatu is one of the hills where there is currently an army camp and they are uh, making the, their facilities really uh, beautiful for visitors. And you can go there, there's a, there's a terrace there that you, can, you have a lovely, lovely view of the uh, Holo city. Um, and our sultanate history, there are palaces of, of our former sultans uh, to see and, and visit. And, and as I said, ethnic communities, the Bajau, which are the sea gypsies of the, of the Sea of Sulu, uh, you know, you can go to, uh, to this place and walk along and see the, see the community. Um, that's very interesting. Textile. Um, the seafood, you know, they, they made this paella and you, they have so much seafood that they, you cannot see the rice anymore. Um, and so Sulu has a lot to offer, plus its natural beauty. They have this lake, uh, which is, sits a little, slightly above the, the sea and the views, views are beautiful. Uh, where I'm sitting used to be where the Abu Sayyaf are, were encamped. Um, the, the military were able to recover uh, the area from, from the group and, and they've cleaned it up and now it, you know it's open and you can uh, go there at sunset and they have really a beautiful uh, view over there. So um, I'd like to just summarize um, you know, what, what I have discussed and, and plus more, some final thoughts also. So PGE provides an invaluable resource and asset for a tourism and travel industry that no other organization in the country could provide. Um, and we aspire to create a positive impact in travel thought, leadership, tourism, education, environment, safety, culture, history, international relations. Uh, we want to develop co collaborative uh, relationships to, with all of you, with our public and private sector to be part of this concerted effort to advance our country's travel and tourism industry. And PGE, PGE's initi initiative in Sulu is one example of such partnership, which is a work in progress. And finally, because of the accessibility and rapid mainstreaming of communication technologies such as uh, video con conferencing, it should now be easier for stakeholders uh, to engage and collaborate with, with organizations such as ours with members located around, around the world. So with that, I thank you very much. Uh, it was... Um, Thank you for, um, for the opportunity to talk to you and to introduce uh, PGE uh, to all of you. Thank you so much, Mamrisa, for sharing to us your great advocacy with uh, the Philippine Global Explorers and uh, you know, the different initiatives that you have in, in your group. Indeed, Sulu is a promising destination with a lot of things to, to offer. So maraming maraming salamat for sharing this uh, beautiful de destination with us this afternoon. And at this point, allow me to call back our speakers for the open forum. Of course, we have uh, Ma'am Wen, uh, Ms. Rowena Serioso, Ma'am Shella Reboredo, Mr. Mon Marinas, Dr. J.P. Rivera, and of course, Ma'am Risa Rasco Ford. All right, so once again, we thank all our um, speakers for this morning. You gave so many inputs in terms of uh, resurfing new experiences with sustainable destinations, maybe more than what uh, our main team have uh, 
you know, stated. And of course, I would like to start this open forum with uh, giving a number of questions from our um, participants as well as from those of our uh, administrators from the different um, professional organizations present for this morning. I would like to start um, with a question for Mom Wen. Mom Wen, um, you gave us yes. a very you gave us a very good um, outlook in terms of uh, priority destinations and banner destinations as part of the programs of OPMD. And uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to get a copy of the product development manual. Yes. Um, thank you, Beth. Actually, uh, I'd like to apologize to the audience. I'm having a problem with my turning on my video right now. Uh, but um, regards with regards to manual, we have yet to roll it out to the public. But uh, in line with the Mandana's ruling, we will be turning over a copy to the local government units and the uh, regional offices. Thank you so much, Ma'am Wen. And, and then from there, it will be made av available to the public. Yes, I, I suppose they can request a copy from their... Um, LGUs or our DOT regional offices, but uh, I, I I just like to um, clarify that we we will still be rolling this out, so maybe we'll have a, a webinar on this or um, an activity uh, where all our stakeholders can participate. Thank you so much, Wam Wen, and of course we're going to look forward to that uh, launching so that we can all get a copy of the product development. Uh, Manual. We're also very interested, uh, of course, in the academic um, sector. No, no. This is something that we can also infuse, of course, in the improvement of our instruction so that we can be more adaptable with what the government would want to, um, to, to uh, undertake, of course, in the coming years as part of your plans and, and programs. Thank you so much, Mom Wen. And um, next question is for Mom Shello. Mom Shello, you mentioned something about repurposing. You know, and um, that art uh, um, acronym made a difference for this morning. And we saw a number of innovative strategies uh, for Okada. I would just like to um, ask, how did it affect the bottom line? Because you've shown us a very positive outlook in terms of finances that you've met your targets. You know, how did it affect the, the bottom line? All of these innovative um, strategies that you have, your partnership with the different stakeholders, and of course, your people management. In, 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 in your property. I thank you so much, Beth. Again, thank you for inviting me and thank you for that uh, question. And I'm so happy that you really like the strategies that we made for Okada. I want to share the best practices that we have because I think it's going to inspire us also and motivate us to, uh, to do more. Uh, with regards to the bottom line, I must say uh, it's still profitable despite the fact that we did have um, some discounts or I must say uh, we offered a tailor-made package uh, to our corporate clients and socials clients, as well as for the food and beverage patrons of Okada. It's still profitable. I think it's just a matter of uh, meeting with your food and beverage team, cost control, and of course, um, laying out the cards to them that this is the market now. We really have to adjust. We really have to be flexible. I know in the beginning that Okada Manila has really, um, what do you call this? Um, I must say, um, aspirational uh, to, to everyone, to, to, to our uh, market. But uh, come the pandemic arrives, so we really have to adjust. We cannot stick with the rates that they really want to have. So as the head of sales and marketing, it is imperative for me to tell them and educate the different departments So we are going to try, okay? We cannot remain on the existing packages. We cannot just, uh, what do you call this? Um, we have to adapt to the change. We have to adapt to the new environment. So we must be open-minded always. It's just a matter of communication with them, actually. 
Thank you very much, Ma'am Shello. And I believe that really made a lot of uh, difference. And uh, I think um, all our partners, those who are participating in this webinar, were able to capture those best practices and uh, they may be open to adapting them in, in their respective properties. Thank you very much. I would You're like welcome. to... Thank you, ma'am. And of course, uh, I would like to um, commend uh, Ma'am Risa for that wonderful uh, presentation. So if you've been reading the chat box, they have a number of positive uh, comments, like Sulu is a great choice now for travel. They have so much to offer and very rich in culture. And soon, hopefully, we'll get a chance to, to travel. In fact, uh, we have a statement here from the president of Piltoa, Mang Fe, that uh, Piltoa will try to mount a tour to Sulu and, and beyond. Parang gusto namin sumama because we were really, you know, entrailed with the the presentation of uh, Mom Lisa. And of course, um, a lot of uh, our participants are, you know, have, have this question on their minds. They, they may not be able to uh, verbalize, but I got uh, one um, private message. What about safety and security? Because I think over the years, Sulu have been branded negatively in terms of safety and security. But, you know, there are times that all of these are just misconceptions and the uh, how do you try to strike a balance in terms of uh, trying to market or trying to introduce this beautiful destination and, of course, trying to balance that concern about safety and security? Um, Lisa? Um, well, first of all, it's, it's really not our job to promote um, any particular destination. Uh, we go, we show where what we see, and we hopefully motivate and inspire others to travel. Um, that's that's as far as we go. Um, in in the case of Sulu, um, it's an ongoing. It's a it's a work in progress. So the the situation there is improving. It's not a hundred percent safe there. There are soldiers on the ground uh, still, but it takes people like. Um, we, we need the first tourist to go there. Um, and, and that's why really um, we decided, uh, PGE, we are, uh, there are extreme travelers in our group. And extreme travelers are people, are travelers who have been to uh, uh, many places in the world. They've gone through a hundred countries and they're looking for something different. Um, in, in any place. And so these are the perfect people to test uh, locations uh, like, like Sulu, uh, where when, once they go, and they're willing to take risks, right? They know where they're going. They, these are the same people who visit Afghanistan and Libya, uh, countries at war, and they are willing to take risks because they love to travel. They want to see the world regardless of what situation it is in. And, and so for testing an area, they are the perfect, actually, um, people to go. And, and once, uh, you know, once uh, they are able to showcase and inspire other travelers uh, to see what they've seen, then that's really when you're starting to see more people coming and mass tourism to them and uh, to build mass tourism. Uh, well, hopefully not the mass that we're all concerned about, but um, a few more tourists. So we need to be careful uh, right now. As I said, it's a work in progress. Everyone, all the stakeholders are working hard. The pr Sulu provincial government um, headed by government Tan, the, the, the Sulu uh, tourism office and, and um, the, the Philippine army, everyone's working so that uh, Sulu will once again be at the forefront of uh, our tourism industry. Thank you very much, Mamika. I would just like to give this follow-up uh, question in the chat box. Um, are your members personally invited by another member? How would an interested traveler try to be a member of uh, EGE? All right. Well, I kind of mentioned it earlier. First of all, you have to have a Philippine heritage. Um, so that's easy. Uh, the second is uh, you have uh, to have traveled to 20 countries and, and, or, and ter territories in the world. So, um, so yeah, once you've, you've reached that number, then we, uh, we welcome you in the community. That's just what we have set uh, right now. 
Thank you so much, Ma'am Lisa. So that's the minimum requirement, 20 countries and above. So And we have 650 Filipinos worldwide who need that. So, so imagine that. And I think the, the, the numbers will be growing from now on. Thank you so yeah. much, Ma'am Lisa. And uh, of course, next, I would like to address this question to uh, Dr. JP. Dr. JP, uh, we've been talking about this often. No? Where is the missing link between industry and academe so we can harmonize our teaching, of course, to, to meet the requirements of in the demands of the industry? How can we solve this? Because they always mention about gap, about disconnect. Okay? So what are the different strategies that we can infuse collectively as part of the academe? And of course, how do you, you know, try to encourage the industry to help us to talk to us and to collaborate with us. Okay, so thank you for that question, Dean Bet. So regarding the gap that we have been always trying to bridge, no, since time in memorial, no, uh, the, we are always communicating, and the academy and industry have has always been in constant communication with each other, defining what the industry needs from the academy and how the academy can help the industry, back and forth. But in this day, no, in this time the discussion could have been more intense, if I may put it that way. Intense in such a way that we discuss what we have not been discussing before, no, the pain points. No? We have to highlight the pain points of the industry. Like, for example, one of the pertinent issues now is the ASEAN MRA on tourism professionals. So, so, so there's a school of thought that sees this at, ah, are we going to deploy our hospitality and tourism students abroad? Not necessarily the case. But we can actually view it no, in such a way that this MRA, this ASEAN MRA towards employment of our students could serve as a challenge, no, as a motivation for tourism stakeholders to upgrade, no, upgrade the education, upgrade the kind of training so that we are comparable with our, with our other ASEAN member neighbor, no, member country. So that's it. So that, that's one of the pertinent issues that have to be discussed on the table in a very intense manner, no? we discuss the pain points and the potential solutions to that kind of issue we're facing right now. Rami Salamat, uh, Doc JP. I, I love that perspective of you know focusing with the, the pain points and uh, at the same time really trying to contextualize how we can be more solution focused. Maraming mm -hmm. maraming salamat, uh, Doc JP. At this point, I would like to pose a question for Sir Moan. So, Sir Mon, you talked about uh, marketing. So, what would be the, the best recovery strategy in terms of marketing destinations of the Philippines? Since, of course, we know that most Asian countries also have their own strategies, okay? And knowing that we are still in the there's a pandemic, you know, how can we, you know, uh, try to infuse um, safety and accessibility in all of these marketing strategies? Thank you, Dean Bet, for that question. I think the best way to market the Philippines is through us. We have millions of Filipinos abroad. We are considered as, that is considered as the soft uh, diplomacy. We can use our own people, our own family and friends abroad, take, um, take advantage of our connection to the many industries we are in worldwide, especially in tourism and hospitality they can be our ambassadors of tourism and encourage their friends, families, and co-workers abroad to come visit the Philippines. And of course, they also have their families here in our own country, encourage their own families to travel, start traveling now, at least locally, to stimulate the economy. Through us, we are the ambassadors of tourism and let's take advantage of our presence worldwide. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Mon. I, I strongly believe in your uh, response that we are the best ambassadors and together collectively through our concerted uh, efforts, we'll be able to um, recapture those markets and then at the same time make our destinations more competitive, not just in Asia, but of course for the rest of the world. I would like to ask this question from coming from our chat box. Um, I, I think there's a question here about uh, for Mom Risa. 
uh, sorry, from, from Ma'am uh, Shello. And um, it talks about um, sustainability. How do you maintain or how do you keep up the sustainability aspect, the environmental aspects of uh, Okada Manila in terms of your practices? Because I think the presentation was focused on innovation, but in terms of sustainability, Sustainability, making the operations more sustainable. You know, is there something, is there a program in, built in in your um, Okada system, Momshelo? Yes, uh, actually, thank you for asking that. Two weeks ago, I was actually one of the speakers in the Sus Sustainability Standards Inc. event, which was held at our grand ballroom. And somehow I also shared our best practices in terms of sus sustainability. Uh, for everyone's information, Okada is very active with this uh, CSR project, wherein we donated all our pet bottles uh, to uh, a plant in Malabon and Bulacan, and they converted these pet bottles into uh, eco bricks. And uh, actually, it was doing very well, and we plan to continue this project and program for Okada Manila because it has been helping not only Okada, not only the environment, but also the people from Bulacan and Malabon. Uh, we also created somehow a livelihood project for them uh, by uh, launching that kind of initiative. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Shella. So there's really an extension <laughs> program, you know, apart from, you know, the offering the, the facility for accommodation or as part of the social responsibility. Thank you so much, Ma'am Shello. And uh, I, at this point, I would like to, to pose this question to all our, to all our speakers, you know. Um, we know that international travel restrictions are loosening. And so what happens next? I think that's, that's actually a big question. And at the same time, for all of you in relation to your respective fields, how do we bring back tourism better to create new experiences and at the, at the same time, sustainable practices? You know, anyone can, can start to answer? How do we bring back tourism better to create new experiences and sustainable practices? Of course, in relation to our theme of reserving new um, travel research and reserving new experiences and sustainable travel destinations. Is there anyone who yes. would like to start? Hello, answer? Beth. Hello, yes, Beth. Please. Hi. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I still can't turn on my video at the moment, but it's anyway. Okay, well, um, um, I think um, what, like what with the Department of Tourism has done, um, we maximized the, the hiatus to develop uh, new circuits. Because when you, you develop new circuits, you, you ease the pressure or impact um, in the destinations because it involves um, uh, two or three or more um, major destinations. So you ease the, the impact that uh, the, the communities and the destination uh, experiences and then you start to with the development of tourism circuits you diversify the products and experiences and you enrich the experiences of the tourists uh, and then you spread the benefits to small communities and uh, businesses so i think uh, we can start with that and uh, as we open the the destination with the easing of travel restrictions to all uh, markets starting tomorrow uh, at least we can showcase uh, more um, products to to our visitors. Thank you so much, Mawen. So that's product diversification and of course, um, spreading the, the benefits, multiplier effect, and so creating more sustainable practices based on focused initiatives um, adaptable to the resources that we have from the government. Maraming salamat, Mawen. And of course, I'd like to call on Sir Mon. Yes. Uh, uh, while we are not going back to pre-2020 levels yet in terms of tourist arrivals, our guests now are more um, conscious on health and sanitation. So I think uh, for our guests now, we can provide more, uh, more activities that will make them safe and that will definitely make them feel um, protected. So one of, one of the activities probably is to provide more activities outdoor. Uh, for example, when it comes to dining, if 
uh, if our facility has an alfresco area, that we can uh, suggest to them that uh, it's better to do it alfresco. If we have meetings and uh, we have open areas like gardens or anything that they will, uh, anything that will make them feel safe and uh, secure. So now the priority is to keep them safe and um, uh, reduce any fear that there can be any contamination or any infectious diseases. So, so now I think uh, we have to keep in mind safety and priority in everything that we do. Thank you so much. Safety, security, restoring um, travel confidence. I think those are the gist of uh, the statement of Sir Mon. Maraming salamat, Sir Mon. May I call next, uh, Ma'am Shello? Ma'am Shello? Yes. Hi again. Um, actually, I have to um, agree with uh, Sir Ramon Marines because in Okada, Manila, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, we really focus on safety. We believe that safety is now the new luxury. I think you have to agree with me with that. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we stick with our campaign, Treaty, through clean, through heart, and through safe. So safety protocols, uh, should be implemented strictly within the property. Uh, pandemic or without pandemic, I think it's going to be our uh, uh, guidelines uh, uh, from now on. And uh, in terms of sustainability, I just want to uh, add also with what I have said earlier in our efforts to become a zero waste company. I just found out that we also donated half a ton of plastics to different recycling um companies and facilities. And this is, of course, our effort, our way of um, helping the environment. I think let humanity uh, connect again with nature. I think that's going to be our mantra as a property. So safety and, of course, uh, protect the environment as well. It's a very beautiful perspective, Mom, Mom Cello. And uh, you started with art, and then you ended also with an acronym, TPP. Of course, trust as a new currency. Maraming salamat, Mom Cello. I would like to call next uh, uh, Doc JP. Doc JP. Hi. So, hi again. So, yeah, it's very, the, the situation is very optimistic. Domestic tourism is really opening. Foreign tourists are slowly coming in. But then the challenge is now on our tourism enterprises regarding our capacity no? as a country, as an enterprise, to actually welcome them while putting emphasis on safety and hygiene. And this has been already this is already being practiced, for example, by hotels. They're very ready, you know, they're very strict. If before you can put in five people in one room, that's only good for two. Now it's very strict, only two. No? And that is that's it's a very good development, no? The strictness of protocols and policies has been imbibed in our systems, which makes traveling in the Philippines a lot safer. And for tour operators also, I've also seen that they are not anymore by the buses, it's now by the van. No? So it's really more of a manageable size that focus on tourist, tourist experience rather than any other agenda. It's really more of the narrative and the tourism experience. And as we continue this trend, I think there's really a great future for Philippine tourism in the next few months, maybe months or years. Thank you so much, Doc JP. I agree there has been a lot of changes in behavior, of course, uh, anchored with responsibility and accountability, not just for the different part of properties, but also individually. Thank you so much. And uh, Ma'am Risa? Ma Risa? Hi. Uh, so pre-pandemic, uh, think, think Boracay, no? It was really um, pre-pandemic. It was hard to implement um, uh, practices, you know, new practices, you know, sustainable practices, you know, safety practices, uh, responsible travel practices, environmental practices. It was hard because they were disrupted to businesses. Um, but now a pandemic happened and it took out, unfortunately, a lot of businesses uh, have closed down. Um, Parang ni level na niya playing field eh. So we should we should take advantage of that the fact that we can rise again and create uh, these practices um, that was harder to implement then. Now it should be easier as 
uh, you know, uh, businesses open up and, um, and it would, and basically it's just easier to, I know, to, um, for them to follow uh, new practices because it's not disruptive uh, for the business. They're, everyone's trying to um, scale up. That's correct, Mamisa. And hopefully uh, we see more positive developments in the coming years. So this has been a very, uh, you know, unforgettable lesson, not just for the industry, but for all of us. So at this point, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of questions and uh, I would have wanted to prolong this discussion, but unfortunately we don't have the luxury of time to do that. And um, in line with that, I would like to thank, we would like to thank all our speakers for today. And um, we would like to present the certificates of uh, appreciation to all our speakers. I would like to call on the virtual floor, the uh, chairperson of the Tourism Industry Board, uh, Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, Maria Cristina Giacchino, and of course from the Department of Tourism, Mom Arlene uh, Alipio, Mom Arlene, so they can be put on spotlight as well. Thank you so Congratulations much. Congratulations to everyone. It was really an interesting conversation we had with all the speakers. If you can just look at the chat room, a lot of uh, positive words actually have been shared by our participants. Uh, in fact, maybe good review would be coming uh, at the end when we do the evaluation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mampina. Let us flash now the certificate of appreciation to all of our speakers for today. Of course, the Department of Tourism, Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, Philippine Tour Operators Association, and Rex Education presents this certificate of appreciation to our speakers. Of course, uh, we have Ms. Rowena Surioso, Shello Reboredo, Ramon F. Marinas, John Paulo Rivera, and Sonrisa Rasco Ford. Uh, in recognition of their invaluable contribution as speakers during Team Fee's 11th webinar entitled The Traveler Search, Resurfing for New Experiences with Sustainable Destination, held today, March 31st, 2022 via Zoom. This is signed by the chairperson of the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, Maria Cristina G. Aquino, and signed as well by the director of the Office of Industry Manpower Development of the Tourist Department of Tourism, Director Rowena Wang Montesilio. So once again, marami salama to all our speakers. Maybe you can have a photo opportunity with our speakers one by one, starting with, of course, Mom, Mom Wen, if she's still with us. And um, Sir, okay, we can have Yan, Mom Wen. Marami salama to Mom Wen. And of course, we have Mom Shello Reboredo from Okada. Thank you so much, Mom Shello. It's an honor to have you with us. We also have, of course, uh, Sir Mon Marinas. Sir Ramon, thank you so much. And Dr. John Paulo Rivera. Doc JP, thank you so much. Salamat din po. Salamat. And of course, from PGE. So we learned a lot from you, Ma'am Riza. So Riza Rasco Ford. Ma'am Arlene, would you want to say a few words to our speakers? Uh, just a big thank you to everyone and uh, maraming salamat sa support and also to our congratulations. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Arlene. Uh, Director Tina? Uh, I guess people will be traveling soon and uh, we're very thankful for all the tips that were shared, uh, whether it's NCR or out of NCR, this is really something that's going to be happening soon. People are tired of looking at the four door, four walls of their room. Uh, now is the no time to actually travel. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. At this point, we would like to award the certificate of appreciation to our host for uh, 
this morning. I'd, I'd like to thank also Dr. Beth for managing the uh, uh, event very well. And so we offer you a uh, certificate of appreciation. She has done this the 11th time. Re really, nothing, nothing has beat us for that. And so thank you, Beth, for managing this very wonderful webinar that we had. Always at your service. Service, uh, the OT, Tourism and Support Foundation Incorporated. And at this point, we'd like to award a certificate of appreciation to Filtoa, Philippine Tour Operators Association, in recognition of their valuable contribution as event host during the TIFI's 11th webinar entitled The Traveler Search Resurfing for New Experiences with Sustainable Destination, signed by the chairperson of the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated, Maria Cristina Giacchino. Signed also by the Director of the Office of Industry Manpower Development from the Department of Tourism, Director Rowena Montesilio. Maraming maraming salamat po, Phil Toa. And um, of course, uh, before we close, I would just like to um, thank everyone for listening. And of course, for Tourism to Recover, governments need to develop a phased approach to balance public so. health and economic needs. They could start by stimulating you know, domestic travel, while international travel bans are still in place in some areas, domestic tourism may be promoted, of course, as mentioned by Mamuen. And while the Philippines is experiencing challenges, Filipinos should remember that through combined efforts and hard work in the past, the country was able to grow the tourism sector and made it to one of the top contributors in our GDP. And of course, this pandemic has shown that what we've come to accept as normal was not acceptable and we needed to wake up to, to have a wake up call. We should not go back to that normal. And as travelers, we have a responsibility to respect the land, clean up after ourselves, not be in public, and of course, use, use our time productively. And of course, as a nation, um, of course, this is something that we have to put forward if you would like to see a lot of progress in, in our system. And uh, of course, uh, at this point, uh, we would like to thank all our uh, participants for this morning. Requirements for an e-certificate only applicable to Zoom attendees. If you were able to attend 80% of the webinar, then you will be given a certificate upon accomplishment of the webinar evaluation. We've set the deadline until April 1, 2022. And um, we would like to flash on our screen the QR code. Okay, so this is an example of the certificate of participation that you will be receiving. It has a built-in QR code for security purposes. And um, the names of the participants will be listed in the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Corporate website. And so please do accomplish the ESF until April 1st so you can redeem or you can get your certificates. We would also like to post our... Um, link in our chat box in case you will not be able to to um, scan them using the QR code. Maraming salamat and of course we would like to end this uh, morning's uh, program on a high note. Of course we would like to um, call the second vice president of the Philippine Tour Operators Association, our host for today, Phil Toa. Maraming maraming salamat. To give the closing remarks, the Vice President, Mr. Arjun P. Chira. Sir Arjun? Thank you, Beth. Greetings and a good afternoon to everyone. Congratulations are in order for all of your very apt and precise, meaningful and educational presentations. The Traveler's Search, reserving for new experiences with sustainable destinations, working hand in hand, DOT trains, TIPFI, Filtoa, Rex Education. And our very special thanks to the technical team of DOT, Filtoa technical team, and our seasoned homegrown shakers and movers, travel enablers, our great speakers. Most of all, to Dr. Tina for her wholehearted guidance to a Jurassic me. I I know now how to work on the Zoom. Arjun Shroff signing off. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Arjun. And of course, we'd like to thank our participants here in Zoom and also in Facebook. Of course, hats off to uh, TV, DOT, Filtoa, Rex Education, to all our speakers and those uh, 
you know, highly dedicated people you're not seeing on your screen, the tech team. Maraming maraming salamat po for coordinating this uh, wonderful webinar that will benefit all the different stakeholders that we have in the industry. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, we hope that you have a good afternoon with us and see you again in our next uh, webinar. Mabuhay at maraming salamat po. Maybe Beth, we can invite them to open their video so we can do a... Uh... Yes, of course. We still have hundreds, more close to 400 participants who uh, stayed on. So may we ask everyone to open your, your cameras for a photo opportunity. And we can flash our biggest smile. Thank you. As you open your cameras, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the officials from the Department of Tourism. TV, Filtoa, all the different professional organizations. Of course, we have a lot of students present uh, for today. Maraming salamat to all the school administrators. If we can have um, a screenshot, we have 15 screens or 15 panes. One, two, smile. Just keep smiling. Just keep smiling, please. <laughs> next. And the next. Keep on smiling, please. We had a lot of food for thought. Now you'll be getting your food for the stomach in a while. Yeah, we'll keep your on. cameras open. Keep on smiling. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Keep on smiling. All right. I hope we were able to capture all those beautiful smiles. And uh, I think... That's a wrap for, for today. Maraming maraming salamat po. Congratulations once again, DOT, TV, Filtoa, Rex Education, and to all the participants who are taking so much information and updates for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless everyone in Mabuhay. Bye, Thank everyone. you, Dr. Ben. Bye, Bye thank, you so thank you Thank you. Thank you so thank much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so Welcome, much. everyone. Please Thank you so much. Stay safe, guys. Thank you.